This is Hannibal from TheHannibalTV.com and we are at the Hilton, downtown New York City, and I am about to pass the mic off to someone who is more of a people person than I am. He's gonna be handling all the WrestleMania 35 weekend conventions for the Hannibal TV, as well as the Impact Wrestling Show later tonight. He is a former WCW ring announcer. He ring announced all the Nitros, all the Thunders, and he was also the TNA ring announcer, as well as the Impact ring announcer. Sir David Penzer. Glad to be back, man. Thanks for having me. I missed this mic back. flag. I'm really excited to be here at New York City, the Big Apple for WrestleMania 35 weekend. And like you said, we're going to go all over. Wherever there's a convention, we're going to be. Wherever there's a show, we're going to try to get there. We're going to hit the Ring of Honor Fan Fest tomorrow. We're also going to go to the Mark Out of the Meadowlands on Sunday. And right here, WrestleCon will be here all weekend getting interviews with your favorite wrestling legends, your favorite ladies, women wrestlers, and up-and-coming stars that you might have heard about that you're going to get to hear from as well but right now as Hannibal said we're going to get in a car we're going to go down all the way to Rahway New Jersey and we're going to interview some of the Impact Wrestling stars before United we stand let's go the Hannibal TV back at WrestleCon with Al Snow friend of the show and today this morning you announced Ohio Valley Wrestling on June 1st the first ever pro wrestling combine tell us a little bit more about that well, the reason that we're having the Combine is, is that for the first time ever anywhere, I think, in the world, yes, sir. Um, we've gotten the proprietary state education system in Kentucky, very forward thinking, very progressive. They have given us provisional approval uh, for accreditation as an actual trade school. So we'll have the actual Al Snow Wrestling Academy um, of Sports Entertainment and Broadcasting where uh, these young athletes will be able to come and not just learn the skills inside the ring, but they'll learn every other skill that will be essential to uh, a career in sports entertainment, not just in the ring, but backstage. They can learn to produce, to direct, to operate a camera, lighting, sound, live event management. We'll even have classes on personal fiscal management and business management as well. That's amazing. If, I, that was, if that was offered when I was in college, I'd have gone. I might go anyway. I'd finish my degree. What the heck? But so, it's a, a two-year, uh, 60 credit hour uh, course. Um, and that was, one of, that was what started us to start thinking because, in, uh, quite honestly, in all of professional wrestling, there's, there are no standards. There's yep. no, there are no standards for performance. Uh, there's no standards for training. Um, you know, and, and I think, quite honestly, I think it's, it's hurt the wrestling business. It's not like it was when we got in. I mean, you, there was a standard, and that standard was that you were held personally accountable for whoever you broke into the wrestling business, and people were very reticent to do it because they didn't want to take a chance on somebody, and that kept the bar, uh, the standard of, of the performers very high. Um, but that's gone away. So what we're going to do is we're going to address the actual sports in sports entertainment. Um, we've developed a combine, a, a series of, uh, of standardized tests that we can use to score and evaluate an athlete's performance. And uh, to do that as well, we're involving the DARI system. The DARI system is this brand new system that they can um, they can film and see an athlete's biometrics, and they can I, I forget how many different points that they evaluate with this system, but they can not only uh, tell your biomechanics and your abilities, your physical abilities, but they also can tell you about it based on your biomechanics and potential injury and your athletic ceiling. Um, oh, I'd fail that. <laughs> Um, but we're going to use all of this, we're having this combine for one main reason, and that is because OVW is making a half million dollar uh, investment wow. in the future of the sport and of the business and of the art of professional wrestling. And we're going to award 15 of these athletes, both men and women are going to compete equally for the same opportunity. Um, we're going to award 15 of these athletes uh, a two year full scholarship uh, to the uh, wow to the school and uh, living facilities and also job placement that they can then earn a living while they're there training and uh, going to get their education. Wow, this is getting me excited. Good stuff, man. Great idea. Thank you. Um, I'm serious. Uh, so tell the people if they want to come and be a part of the Combine how they could uh, be at, come to Ohio Valley Wrestling. 
go to ovwrestling.com or aswa.live. We will have the uh, the uh, tests up there. We also ha will have uh, the IQ test and the psych evaluation test there for you to be able to fill out. Uh, see, there's where I, I'd be bad. <laughs> The psych one That's where we'd, we'd all fall apart yeah. it's on the uh, psych eval. Yeah. Uh, let's face it, you have to be crazy to want to do this business. And I think that's what we're doing is we're checking to just see how insane you are so that we can let you in the so, door. So if you fail the psych evaluation, you your get to go in. Money. <laughs> your money. Great stuff. Hey, Al, great stuff. And uh, you're going to be with the Legends of Wrestling in Detroit on um, April 20th. Tell us a little bit about that. I'm so excited. I'm going to be on at the Legends of Wrestling in Detroit, Michigan. Um, it's, it's going to be an awesome time. It's a great family fun event. You get to see a lot of superstars that have been there and around for years. Come out, join us. We're going to have a blast. Now if I can only get your flight information. <laughs> we'll be back. i got to get it. Ready? It's always fun to interview the interviewer, kind of turn the tables. And I'm here, you see the Canadian flag, the Hannibal TV, a Canadian company, Great North Wrestling. And we're here with a fellow Canadian, Alicia Tad. Alicia, uh, welcome to the Hannibal TV. Thank you so much for having me. We are here. It is WrestleCon weekend. It's crazy in here, isn't it? People are everywhere. Yeah, I'm seeing people I haven't seen in 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. It's so nice seeing familiar faces, fans coming up, so many friends as well, and the wrestlers. It's just an absolute blast. So for the six people who don't know that watch the Hannibal TV, tell everybody what you what you do. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I am a backstage host. I'm also a ring announcer, and I do promos backstage with a bunch of the wrestlers. I also run my own channel, which is kind of how this whole thing started, called Ambi, where I sit down with musicians and wrestlers, and it's just a fun time. We just shoot the breeze for a little bit, and people seem to really enjoy it. So there's casual and fun conversations. Congratulations, sir. In order, I saw you sign with uh, AEW recently. Yes. Uh, congratulations. Tell us a little bit about that and uh, what you're looking forward to at Double or Nothing. Yes, absolutely. So I am signed on to Work Double or Nothing, and it's going to be an incredible show. As everyone knows, All In, an incredible success. And I think Double or Nothing is definitely going to follow in that path, if not be even better. The card that they're putting together right now and the people that they have signed so far, it's pretty impressive. So I'm very excited to be a part of it. So for those six people who didn't know where to find you, where can they find you? You guys can follow me if you hit up alishatoot.com. All my socials are on there. Instagram and Twitter is at alishatoot and Facebook is facebook.com slash alishatootinterviews. So just search up my name. You'll find it. Say hello. I mispronounced your name at the beginning. I'm so sorry. That's an American pronunciation. It actually is. Everyone says a two or a tout. So I don't even correct people anymore. However you want to say it, do it. Exactly. As long as you're saying your name. <laughs> That's what I say. You can call me anything. Just call me. Just call me. Nice to meet you. Good luck. With you. Thank you so much. Back here on the Hannibal TV at WrestleCon Day 1. And ladies and gentlemen, if you remember a couple years ago when we were at WrestleCon, we interviewed a couple of young up-and-coming talents who now are all in either NXT or WWE. So ladies and gentlemen, we're hoping the same thing happens. Welcome to the world. My friend, Amber Nova. Thank you so much for the introduction. So Amber, tell us a little bit uh, how you got involved in the business and uh, uh, what you've been doing. So I've been uh, training off and on good a good while for about four years. I've wrestled for WWE NXT, Impact Wrestling. I'm now here at WrestleCon in New York and I'm stoked. So yeah, I've been doing really well. I'm going to be in uh, London and I'm going to be wrestling in the UK for the first time in June. I've wrestled all over the US. California, Arizona, um, New York, mostly the Florida scene, and I'm just going to keep on rocking in the free world. One thing that I found interesting about you, you're introduced from the garage, you sort of do a girl mechanic gimmick, and that's a shoot, it's not a gimmick. You're a big time car lover, and, uh, and, and tell us about that. I am the daughter of a mechanic. Uh, my parents born and raised in New Jersey, I was born in Jersey, and yesterday I shot with four different cars. Um, I, sh I promote, I do classic car shows, I change my own oil, I drive a 73 Chevy Nova, and that's why I am Amber Nova. So you can change your oil, I don't even know how to change my oil. Should it's I be embarrassed? Oh, I can, no, I can teach you how to change your oil, it's easy. I would love it, I'm gonna take you up on it. <laughs> Ladies, wait, wait, hey, by the way, where can people find you? You can find me Amber Nova 73 on Instagram, Twitter, Amber Nova 73 just about everywhere. 
Ladies and gentlemen, meet my friend Amber Nova. She is going places, and you can say you saw her win right here on the Hannibal TV. So I'm back with my favorite women's tag team ever, Velvet Sky Angelina Love, the beautiful people. And I was telling you, I uh, had something uh, to, to surprise you with. Angelina wasn't there two years ago at WrestleCon when we first uh, did the Hannibal TV, but we did over 50 videos that were downloaded, and the number one most watched video... Love it, Sky. What do you have to I'm say to all your fans? I mean, are we really surprised? Anytime any of the beautiful people are involved in anything that has to do with cameras or videos, we are the number one rated or downloaded most viewed video. So, Penzer, are like, you surprised? We're like magnets. Really. No, no. And now that Angelina's here, now that we have double the trouble with both beautiful people, we're going to have double the downloads. I'm, I'm sure of it. Angelina, you were nice enough to be on my podcast recently, and Velvet, I'm going to try to get you on as well. Um, we talked a lot about the uh, women's wrestling, and of course, this weekend, uh, the women headline. WrestleMania. What are your thoughts on that? And uh, when are we going to get the beautiful people in there to challenge for the uh, women's tag team title? <laughs> well, I don't see that. I don't see that happening, Dave Penzer. That's funny, though. I say, okay, so I think the women main eventing is awesome. I think now with how women's wrestling is and how it's being viewed and accepted, I think now is the perfect time to do it. Um, and I think that this gives them the most perfect platform. You can't get any bigger than main eventing WrestleMania, to be perfectly honest. So I think those are the three best women to be doing it, and I think they're going to kill it, honestly. Velvet, when you look back at your time at TNA, which is where you really uh, made your name, uh, do you have a favorite memory? Brown paper bag, baby. <laughs> we brown paper bagged every single knockout in that company. And, I mean, can you blame us? Have you seen them? Have you seen them? You look at us, and then you look at them, and it's like, hmm, thank God for those bags. We did that division justice by putting those bags over their ugly faces. Right, girl? We were just doing everybody a favor, because we care. We care. We care about it. You, you, you guys our, really like, are caring people. We are. We're caring and we're giving people. So when we would paper bag ugly people, we were just trying to help everybody else out, not have eyesores. I mean, not to mention we were the highest rated segment on the show week after week, but who's keeping track, really? Favorite uh, third beautiful person, uh, Madison Rain or Lacey Von Eric? Yep. Cute Kip and Lacey Von Eric, yes. But yeah, no, I really, we have to say Kip. We had a lot of fun with Kip. Kip, Kip was like our fashionista. And who could forget cute Kip prancing down the ramp in his tight little shorts and his tight little muscle shirt and his pink fluffy boa. He's over like down at the other end yeah, doing the same forget, thing. don't forget, Kip was also one half of the biggest tag teams in the entire world and in one of the biggest factions in the entire world, which we've had small comparisons to sometime, which is pretty cool. So you can't get any cooler than And I agree. Gun. One of my favorite, they, they are my favorite tag team. We talked about that on, on City Ringside, my podcast, Angelina. Yep. Uh, where could uh, the fans follow you and find you? I know that you're doing some YouTube stuff, and uh, mm. we talked about that. Tell us where we can find you. Yes, uh, Twitter at actual a love, Instagram a love for life two two two, YouTube. My channel is about Angelina, and I have a kids channel called Mimi's World. And where can we find you, Velvet? You can find me wherever a pack of Oreos are. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, no. You I'm don't really look good. like it. Well, you know, I, I look like the one eating the Oreos. Oreos really do a body them. good. They do a body good. No, anyways, um, my Twitter is at uh, Velvel Holler. That's V E L V E L Holler, and uh, Instagram is Sky is Velvet. We're waiting for the downloads to keep on coming. The beautiful people here at WrestleCon on the Hannibal TV. Thank you, ladies. Hi. Thanks, Spencer. Uh, if you could just act like you're talking really quickly for a quick boomerang. Boomerangs are amazing. For a boom, yes. How could I get you on my podcast? Let's set it up. You gotta call her. I don't have so her just number. Just talk. Just talk. Just talk. So honestly, this is what we do. Another. How's the like How's the YouTube smile. thing going? Like, it's going good. It's going. Get good. ready for the boom. Just smile and move. I actually looked at the the kids thing you did. Ready? Smile. Thanks, bud. Back on the Hannibal TV with a legendary, and I mean that with all due respect, Thank Bill Apter, uh, the dean of uh, uh, journalists and professional well, wrestling. Wait a minute. You said the dean, and you know I do. If you not younger fans, you remember Jerry Lewis? Yes. So I'm not really the dean. I'm really the Jerry. <laughs> uh, 
I had to do that. Yeah, I know you like to you do impressions way better than I can. Oh. So, so tell us what you're up to now. I know you have a podcast. Tell us about that. I have a podcast. I'm appearing at uh, several conventions. In June, I'm going to be inducted into the uh, New England Pro, Pro Wrestling Hall wow. of Fame. Congratulations. Thank you. And that's about the 14th or 15th local Hall of Fame that I've been inducted in. And I'm so thrilled that the people behind all these shows think that I'm worthy enough. Today at WrestleCon, there were people from Bangladesh, from Singapore, from Japan, from uh, Ohio. Uh, no, from all <laughs> over the world. Coming Not Ohio. Me, Ohio. Coming over to me, and uh, they, all, they all knew me from all over the world, so I'm, I'm flattered by the fan attention. So I'm doing the conventions. Um, I'm uh, currently doing the After Chat podcast. I'm still in charge of OneWrestling.com. And a new project coming out, which will be in mid-April, is I'm doing a show on Roku. No Joku, it's Roku. <laughs> and it's going to be the Bill After Show. And uh, you can go to Jarrett Parsons Wrestling. The Jarrett being Jerry Jarrett. Jarrett Parsons Wrestling on Roku. And you can check out my show. Best of luck with that. Congratulations on the Thank Hall you. of Fame nominations. You're one of the classiest guys in a you, business sir, that much. sometimes isn't. But yeah, uh, You are too, David. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate that. And um, looking forward to uh, watching the, uh, the After Show. Yes. I'm Where could they find you on social media? Oh, at After One Wrestling. It's the number one, not the word. After One Wrestling number on Twitter. One. And I'm on Facebook, Bill After. Or you can email me at beafter at onewrestling.com. The legendary Bill Apter. You know Pleasure what's to have you. To say now? What's that? We'll see you at the matches. Yes, sir. We're back on the Handled Bill TV from WrestleCon with my friend Marcus Buff Bagwell. Buff, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing, man? Good. I know you're working your way back from a car accident and doing well, looking great. Uh, uh, when do you expect to be at full, full blown, ready to go? I'll be honest with you, man. I, I didn't think I'd say this for a long, long time, but I'm about 90% right now. I just, right. I just did two matches for uh, for Big Time Wrestling, and I really, I really, really was able to go out and look like, actually look like Buff Bagwell again in the ring and you know and actually hit the ropes and do my dance and be buff again you know so I'm 90 percent man I really am so we broke a little news on my podcast sitting <laughs> ringside and I saw that you had some follow-up interviews so I guess it's, it's created a little bit of a stir yeah uh, uh, what, real quickly for the fans of the Hannibal TV why don't you tell the story uh, the, the story is uh, you know and it, you know, first of all let's let's go let's go back for Eric and for me this is a twenty. This is twenty years ago, you know. I mean, that's eighteen or nineteen, no joke. But really, I mean, in my head, at least, he spoke to me about, you know, being in an airplane crash and going down, dying, and then, you know, at, at Halloween Havoc, coming back, you know, like a ghost on a wire coming down, and I. I don't think I could dream this up. I don't think I could. I had heard it at the time. <laughs> and actually, you're the one that actually asked yeah, me, and I've never yeah. had nobody ask me before. Exactly. So as soon as you asked, I went, yes, oh my God, nobody's ever asked me that before. But that was a story. And if you remember, I came out of Halloween Havoc, like with the Bill Clinton mask yeah. or something. Also, that tells you there was something there, and I can't remember what, but him wrecking in Mexico and all that stuff, he said, I'm not quite sure what that would have got us out of anything, but... I love Eric to death. Yeah. Eric and me were super tight and all that, so maybe it's some type of misunderstanding, but I, I know I was misunderstood enough that I called my parents and go, listen, I'm getting ready to die on television, so I don't want to scare you guys. And, and the, 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 kick, the, kick, the kicker was they were going to work the boys and the, the fans. Oh, that was the whole catch of it was if, you could, if we could work the boys, then, of course, the fans would be, you know, totally taken. So... That we were dead set on it and all that, but it got shut down really quick. No, that was yeah, Turner, Turner, Turner Broadcasting head on. Yeah, yeah. G-rated show and all that. That went down pretty quick, but that's when we were trying to compete with, you know, Vince at a PG level, and we was we were G-rated. So, uh, you know, just uh, I, you know, I hate. <laughs> I saw Eric in the bar, and I just thought about it. we didn't even talk about this. We oh, just, really? yeah, I'm surprised he didn't or we didn't. But I don't think I could come up with a ghost on wire. 
and nothing. I don't think I could. I dream that. <laughs> no, like I said, I had heard it on the time. Maybe he had pitched it and then pitched something else. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not calling him a liar, no, but, but I had heard that uh, as no well. Way. But but he he did it acknowledge that there was an angle being yes. done. The plan. He just said it was going to be him, yeah. and maybe you were going to be on the plane with yeah. him. My, I got must have got mixed up when I called my parents and told them I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> well, great to see you, old friend, and I'm um, glad you're almost uh, back to 100. Hey, we'll where where we'll can the long. fans find you on social media? Social media, MarcusBuffBagel.com. MarcusBuffBagel.com is my website. And I'm Marcus Buff Bagel everything. Instagram, Twitter's Mark Buff Bagel, but everything else is pretty much Marcus Buff Bagel. But go to MarcusBuffBagel.com, check the website out, and you can go anywhere you want from there. We'll be back in just a moment with more wrestling legends right here at the Hannibal TV. Buff Daddy. We're here on the Hannibal TV at WrestleCon with Billy Gunn and his son, Austin. First time meeting Austin. Good to meet you. Oh, it's a nice uh, to meet you. Impressive looking athlete. Thank you. <laughs> he, <laughs> is. he is because he's my offspring. I have great, great jeans. <laughs> there you go. I wish I had those jeans. <laughs> Half of those jeans. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking to the beautiful people. My girls. Yes. They were, and, and I said favorite third member, Madison Rain or Lacey Von Erich. And they both at the same time said cute Kip. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because that was the best time that I that I had at TNA was when I was with the girls and we were the beautiful people because it was so much fun. Like, it, we just had a blast. Uh, they talked about you hopping and skipping down the... Yeah, I used to wear boas and be... I remember I was a ring announcer. Because we know that I'm not very outgoing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just wear all kinds of crazy stuff. And we just had a lot of fun. We just went out there and did our thing. They were awesome to work with. I loved them to death. I just had an epiphany. All those times you walked by and didn't say hello, I thought you didn't like me. You're just not outgoing. Yeah, no, I'm just not <laughs> outgoing. I'm an introvert. Well, that makes me feel a lot better now. <laughs> yeah. No, it was never nothing against you. Now it's I can stop drinking. Some, yes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we just keep everything inside, and I'm one of those. Awesome. And how is it to uh, to start in this business, uh, having a father who's a WWE Hall of Famer, or soon to be? Congratulations, by the way. Thank you very much. I appreciate it's, that. It's unbelievable. I get to get to watch him do his thing still. Um, it's kind of not just looking in the past. He's current. Like he's still in it. He still coaches right me every middle. week. I train with him every single day. So it's just it's just we're on a routine, and it's just so special to have this bond between him and I, and just get to do my thing and learn from one of the best. And now since he's going in the Hall of Fame, it's just one more notch to add on his belt and it's just like I can't complain I have the best teacher in the world so absolutely tell me what that means to you to be you've had quite a career done a lot of things been on all over the world uh, what does it mean to you to be in the hall going into the Hall of Fame it, you know it, it's very special I mean you you go on the Hall of Fame and that means that that a company and people have recognized you as being one of the best or you know being somebody that's in influential is that the word in Up kind of the something yeah that that you've done something special in this business and now they're rewarding us and we're all going in as a group as DX and we all know that we were pivotal in the attitude era which and it's and it's super cool it, it, it's awesome Go into the current real quickly. I know you're involved in what's the talk of the town. Yeah. All Elite Wrestling. Tell, <laughs> yeah. tell me what you can about being involved in that and uh, what the future lies. Uh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're working towards Double or Nothing, which is in Vegas, May 25th. Um, that'll be the, you know, the start of AEW. And, and it's, and it's going to be an alternative to great television, great wrestling. You have some of the greatest talent on the planet there. And, and, and it's, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be innovative. They're going to do some new stuff that we haven't seen before, but it's a great time to be a wrestling fan. It's a great time for us to be involved in wrestling. Any scoop on the TV deal you could give us? I have no scoop whatsoever. That is above my pay grade. Zero scoops. Yes, zero, zero scoops. scoops. Will we see Austin in AEW? You will not see him there. He is going another direction. And where was that? That would be New no Japan, scoop, hopefully. Uh, there we go. Now we got, we got a scoop. We finally got oh, a scoop. No scoops. Oh, I'm not supposed to give scoops. Sorry, that, I wasn't supposed to give that away, but I'm giving it away anyway. Way. Congratulations. Thank How do you, you so feel much. about going and competing over there? No David scoops, Finley no is scoops. actually a very good friend of mine, uh, and I know you'll be working with him as well. How does it feel to be going over there and honing your craft? Um, I think it's just this is the next stage. You know, I, I, coming into the business, like he, he gave me the right platform to be able to do what I do, and he, he kind of gave me the reins, and I took it. So I think this is a great opportunity to kind of just separate paths, you know, I, I just let him do his AEW thing and me go into the no scoops direction. Um, yeah, but it, it's great, man. I'm just going to one foot in front of the other and do my thing, what I do best. 
There you go. Best of luck to you, Austin. Thank Congratulations, you. Uh, you, Billy, Thank on the Hall of Fame and AEW appreciate. and continued success. Thank you very much. I appreciate Thank it. Get Russell Khan here, WrestleMania weekend in the Big Apple, and none other than the busiest man <laughs> in professional wrestling. Literally <laughs> sleeps like two hours a night. God bless you. Uh, Conrad Thompson, uh, 83 weeks. What's happened? Uh, when? Uh, you still doing the Pritchard one? Uh, we absolutely are. Every Friday at noon, something to wrestle, man. I don't know how, but I'm going to fit a JR one in there somehow, too. You're doing a JR one, too? A JR podcast is on the way, and we hope to debut it sometime in April. Is that a scoop? Uh, it might be a scoop. You know, it's been hinted at. There's been rumor and innuendo, but we can confirm officially on Hannibal TV that it's going to happen. So tell me about how you go about... You know, because you own a business, too. Yeah. A very successful business. Well, I mean, yeah, we do okay. So mortgages is the full-time gig, and now podcasting is the part-time gig, and I guess conventions are the third. I don't know how I have time for all Shows that. Shows on the weekends? Shows on the weekends. and Not to mention StarCast, which is just a little convention in Las Vegas. Yeah, a little convention over 100,000 square yeah, feet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's going to be was, nice. I was being sarcastic. Sure, sure. No, no, no. It's just how in the world do I fit all this in? I don't know. I've got a great support staff. I've got a very patient wife. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, tell us a little bit about StarCast. Uh, I think you shocked a lot of people by signing The Undertaker, uh, Ric Flair, Sting, Bret Hart are headlining, and uh, any other hints of who's to come? Yeah, you know, we, we recently announced uh, Stan Hansen, and we got Tatsumi Fujinami, and for something totally different, we got Chris Cyborg I from UFC that. fame. So it's going to be the place to be this Memorial Day weekend, Las Vegas, Caesars Palace. We are here with my Twitter friend, the Blue Meanie. Ladies and gentlemen, he has a brand new game called Retromania. Mini, tell us all about it. Hey, it's a it's a great 2D old school arcade style game in the in the uh, vein of uh, WrestleFest, which was like the big popular arcade game back in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, 2D graphics, uh, but with a current roster of like Blue World Order, the Road Warriors, Tommy Dreamer, Austin Idol, and Zack Saber Jr. with many more wrestlers to be added soon. Uh, the fine folks uh, here who, who brought me in are. Uh, uh, doing a great job to help promote it and stuff like that. So if you uh, follow me on Twitter at Blue Meanie BWL, I'm, I'm constantly talking about all that good stuff. So we're here for WrestleMania weekend, and I know you had a WrestleMania moment you've been tweeting about and showing old pictures. Describe your WrestleMania moment and how cool is that to look back and say you had one? Dude, it's so surreal because uh, growing up a wrestling fan in Philadelphia, uh, WrestleMania comes to your hometown, uh, city you were born and raised, and then you you aspire as a professional wrestler. I mean, if you want to play football, you want to play in the Super Bowl. Sure. If you want to be in a if you're a wrestler, you want to make it a WrestleMania. So it, it was kind of crazy, you know, to be able to uh, get. I was very fortunate to be paired up with Goldust, who uh, happened to have this great feud, and I had a great storyline with him where I, I kept calling him Mommy and. Me and, me and Ryan uh, Shamrock were fighting for his attention. So uh, that launched us into a, a match at WrestleMania where I was able to manage him. And it was so surreal. And, uh, you know, 10 minutes from my house, you know, basically at a WrestleMania. So I made sure when, when I went out for that WrestleMania, I did a special shirt with uh, me, Goldust, and Ryan. And uh, I made a point. You know, no matter what's happening in the ring, I'm gonna make sure the announcers say my name a couple times. So if you, you happen to watch that four-way uh, match, you know, you hear Jerry Lawler, Blue Meanie's out here running around like a maniac. I was like, this is my hometown, this is WrestleMania. I don't know if this is happening again, but I'm gonna make sure they notice me, so. That's great that you had that moment and you're one of the good guys in the business. Retromania, be sure to hit you up on Twitter to find out more, correct? Yeah, you can also go to uh, Retrosoft Studios. Retrosoft Studios. On Instagram and Retrosoft Studio on Twitter. You can find folks, uh, they got some two great 2D graphics. Uh, the ECW Arena, this is a shot of the ECW Arena oh, cool. right here. And uh, it's, it's going to be a great game. It's a fun game. There'll be a storyline mode just with an upla updated you know, roster. All right, we'll see if we can put the, uh, the information on the bottom of the video. Very Thank cool. you so much. Have a good weekend. Always a pleasure to be here with you, man. You're one of the good guys. Uh, and thanks to, for uh, Hannibal having me on his website. I love the content. I love the site. Thank you. Thank you.
We are here on the Hannibal TV at uh, WrestleCon, WrestleMania 35 weekend in New York City. I am so happy to see this guy, one of my oldest and best friends in the wrestling business, one half of the Midnight Express and one of the greatest guys, one of the nicest guys to ever step foot in the business that's not full of a lot of nice guys. I'm talking about beautiful Bobby Eaton. Bobby, thank you so much. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, Dave. Good to see you again. So uh, tell me about, uh, you know, it's been a long time. Tell me about how you broke in the business a little bit and uh, what, you, what you've been up to lately. Well, when, the way I broke in the business, I started putting the ring up in, uh, in Huntsville, Alabama. And they ran that town that Friday night, so we put the ring up sometime during the day. We just got in there afterwards and practiced with one another. You know, that's about it. And so you went on to form one of the uh, most famous tag teams. Uh, a lot of talk about you guys going in the WWE Hall of Fame after Rock and Roll Express did. Any rumors about that? And how would that be as an honor for you? Well, I mean, I'd be glad, glad to do that. But I'm just, I don't know to deal with uh, Jimmy or, or Dennis, you know. So I'd have to take it up with them. Jimmy's still the boss, huh? He's still the boss. So, uh, me and you and uh, Pee Wee Anderson used to travel, and Arn Anderson, no relation, uh, used to travel around. Pee Wee's gone, Arn is upstairs, I think, and great to see you here. Ta what, what are your memories about your time traveling with uh, my rookie ass? With you? Great. It was good. It was good. You know, uh, all business, and then, of course, we had a little fun later on. A couple drinks? A couple of drinks. Now, do you still, uh, do you still, when you go to the locker rooms, do you still have like 18 pair of socks in your bag? No, I don't have 18 pair, but uh, when I was on the road all the time, I kept a lot of stuff with me. Sewing kit? Huh? Sewing kit? Sewing kit, bunch of them. <laughs> Matter of fact, I got a sewing kit somebody gave me the other night in the town that had my picture and Stan Lane on it. Really? So let me ask you a question. We'll put you on the spot. Do you have a favorite between Dennis and Stan? They're both good workers, both good guys. I have around just two different, two different guys, you know. Who is more fun in the bar? In the bar? Stan? Stan. Stan Lane, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stan make a bar, man. All right. So what are you doing now, Bobby? Nothing. Just relaxing and um, taking it easy. Seeing my grandkids get big. You got grandkids? A few. A few. Yeah. Is your son still wrestle or no? Every now and then. Yeah. You know, he just uh, never got started with it good, I guess. So if you're a man of few words, and I know that, and uh, again, one of the nicest guys, if you had one message to the fans who supported you all these years and you had an opportunity to talk to them right now, what would that message be? Oh, I, I appreciate the following and the uh, showing up, autograph signing and stuff like that. You know, uh, Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Bobby Eaton, and great seeing you, my friend. Thank you, Dave. We're here at WrestleCon at the Wrestling with Regret table. That's hard to say with the Wrestling with Regret. They I got, I they got a belt. See? Yeah, here. Hold okay. the belt up. Here. And I'm here with Brian Zane. Brian, tell us about uh, the fans, the three fans that may not know what you do. Tell us about, a little bit about what uh, Wrestling with Regret is. Well, Wrestling with Regret is a YouTube channel I started up about six years ago as a way to, to pop myself and my friends. Uh, kind of a combination of, you know, it's, uh, you know, video essays reviewing, you know, bad things in wrestling. And it just grew from there. And now I do a lot of different things. And I have this as a full-time job. And I've got wow. a crew, our Felix Finch over here and uh, Jay Biggs. And so, yeah, this is our fourth straight WrestleCon, just kind of spreading the word of regret. And it's so crazy to see fans come up to me and like mark out for little old me, because we're surrounded by legends here. And for me to be kind of in that class, people say, I came just to see you. It's really humbling. That's amazing. I, I was telling uh, the cameraman here, the boss, uh, that uh, Donald, hey Donald, how you doing? Uh, I was telling him that you know it's busy at WrestleCon when people are stopping me to ask for pictures. Right. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's, it, it, WrestleCon is like that great kind of meeting place because everyone's got the common shared love of wrestling. So there's so, and even within that, there's so much overlap of like what people like and, you know, the different eras they grew up in, the different stars they like, the ones they want to follow and stuff. And for me to be kind of in the middle of all that and for us to be in the middle of all that is like super, like I said, it's very humbling and it's crazy this YouTube channel I started for a laugh is now something that's like touched so many lives. Well, like I said, for the half dozen people who don't know, tell, uh, tell them where they can find you. Well, yes, it is uh, Wrestling With Regret. It was a W. Hold the belt up so you can show them. That's the Wrestling With Regret 
on YouTube, and then uh, you've got. I'll, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can just I can do this, um, and then I'll be uh, on Instagram at Brian Zane, Twitter at Z Man Brian Zane. No disrespect to Tom Zane, God rest his soul. Uh, but yeah, that's where you can find us and uh, prowrestlingtees.com slash wrestling with regret. You find all your wrestling with regret merchandise as well. And uh, yeah, almost 250,000 subscribers worldwide. It started in 2013. We're almost there. I was trying to get that number by Mania. I don't think we'll get quite there, but we're getting pretty close. That's uh, nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, just happy to be here. Happy to meet the fans. Right. Thank you guys. Sorry for the awkward microphone. It's okay. <laughs> holding a belt and holding a microphone in both. Both hands are, are tough. Now you know how the, the, the real champions yeah, of the exactly. have to handle it. Exactly. <laughs> All right. You're on the Hannibal TV. We're with Wrestling With Regret. Back at WrestleCon on the Hannibal TV with my good friend, my old friend, Daphne, the Scream Queen. Uh, Daphne, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm always here with Franny. We're attached at the hip. So you got the Queen of Extreme and the Scream Queen all the way back. And we just, we always have a good time. Well, you're always a ton of fun wherever you went. Um, you have an interesting story. If you could tell the, the, the Crib Notes version real quick. You got hired, I believe, for a day to work as an actress for WCW. Correct? It was supposed to be a six week part. Oh, six week part. Yeah, and it work. turned into a career. How'd that happen? It turned into this is your 20. Can you believe that? And I was going to go to grad school. Oh, wow. Uh, but uh, no, it was just they wanted a crazy person to stalk David Flair. And I was an actress, but I was also athletic. And most actresses I think that they hired were like, you know, they're like, can you like fall off the apron or can you do And they were like, oh, extra made Where I was like, can can I? Oh yeah, remember I can't. one of the first things I did is you were on all fours and they were like, can you? Oh, off the all in, the, fours? in the ring you were like, oh, in the ring. Okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that took me a beat. And I remember the agents being in there and they're like, okay, and I'm so new. And they're like, can, okay, can you kick Penzer and just make it look like I'm really harsh and distressed so you because you're so evil? And I whined at him and he goes, that was great. And then and then it kept then they kept using me and let me do more and more stuff. Then I go to the power plant and I train. So it's all my fault, so, really. Well, you gave them that like, it was. If you would have said no, that I don't think I'd be in the business. But since you said yes, she's doing a good job. I don't know. And they kept me around. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but <laughs> I know you've had a lot of fun though. With that broken necks and everything. Oh well. So where could the fans find you? Well, I'm on social media. I don't. I can't wrestle. I haven't wrestled since 2010. So I'm always Scream Queen Daff on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Um, I have an Etsy store that I sell things. Um, but I just really do signings, and I'm trying to do more seminars. I've done three, and I love it. I love teaching. They get seminars from guys, and it's all ring work, but right. they don't get the character. Right. And that's where I care. I see what they do in the ring, and I'm like, oh, what have you done? this and they're like ooh and then I watch them work and I'm like ooh they, they did my idea and it worked so that that gives me so much gratification since I can't do it myself anymore you know so I enjoy that that's my favorite that's awesome Daphne great seeing you as oh, always Hander, much love. we'll be back with more Hannibal TV from WrestleCon we're back at WrestleCon WrestleMania weekend on the Hannibal TV and a friend of the show like they used to say Dan the B Severn a uh, longtime friend of the Hannibal TV and the Hannibal himself and uh, I actually heard you competed last night is that true I was involved in blood sport last night it's kind of a very unique professional show where there are no ropes on the ring they basically have the ring set up and it's a, a, a very strong style or shoot style type of a, a show that is presented how often do you compete in any you know, whether it be MMA or strong style or professional wrestling at this point in your career? At, at this point in my career slash or I should say age factor now because the beast isn't really getting any younger here right now. I mean, I'm, I'm actually proud to say that I'll be turning 61 here shortly. Wow. I don't look like a 61 year old cat. No, you don't. I don't act like a 61 year old cat. You look younger than me. Well, I'll, I'll tell you who my, my hairstylist is. It's not the real color of my hair, my friend. I'm just so glad I got some hair to color. But you know, yes, I climbed into the old uh, squared circle last night, and I had a lot of fun there with uh, Frank Muir. It was his very first professional wrestling match ever in his career, and he's got a great career ahead of him. So it was, it was great to be breaking bread with, with, with Frank there last night. That's great. I know you had a run as the NWA World Heavyweight Champion for a time. Tell me about, you know... Actually, over there, if you want to take a little scan over, we'll move over here real quick. Make a scan over here that... Uh, oh, there that, it is. 
Here's the actual original NW belt right here, but then also a actually much better picture of it right there. I was just told a little bit earlier there, there's a uh, podcast that's taking place there tomorrow and that uh, I should go over there live and challenge the current NWA champion because I never lost the belt and that is legit. I never lost the NWA belt. I was stripped of it because I had a pay-per-view taking place the same night that they had failing sales. Whose problem is that that they have failing sales? And then they, they stripped me the belt, so I'm thinking, I never lost the belt. For all rights, I am still the NWA champion, still to this day. Sure, even though the NWA might not have been what it was back in the heyday, well, how, how was it to, the responsibility on your shoulders oh, yeah, to carry that mantle on? Well, this is this right here is the only picture in history where inside the octagon cage, wow. the NWA belt was carried out to the UFC as part of my entourage. And the UFC at that time did not want to have nothing to do with professional wrestling because they were all about being the, the real deal. And I said, you guys don't understand the history of that belt. And I educated them and I go, you know, never have to worry about Dan Severn and doing any kind of strange antics right there. So the belt was carried out. And then at the conclusion of UFC number five, I'm holding up the UFC title belt along with the NW title belt, the only photograph in history inside the octagon. 20 plus years before Brock Lesnar came along as well. How do you think, uh, I know that's different weight classes, but would you like to have been able to measure up maybe against a Colin McGregor back in the day? Um, it's, uh, well, I mean, yeah, there's, there's weight classes sure. now. There, there had been way back in the day that, that it was beginning. You you had these David versus Goliath type of matchups. Yeah, I think the biggest weight difference was just over 400 pounds was the biggest weight difference ever. And back in uh, the heyday, how do you think you would have matched up against McGregor? Well, I mean, let's face it, his biggest uh, weakness is one of my greatest strengths. Which is? Grappling. There you go. I always just tell people that, uh, you know, I'm not going to win, I'm not going to win the, 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 the war of, of the fist right now, but if you get within the arm's reach and I clinch you, I will welcome you to my world and you will never see the light of day again. Dan Severn, the Beast, uh, wish I could have seen you uh, grapple last night, but so glad that you would give us a little bit of your time. I know you always have time for the Hannibal and the Hannibal, Hannibal TV. Network, you bet. I, I, I did really enjoy anything I could possibly do in the future right there. Keep coming back, because rest assured, the Beast is long for being done. Back at WrestleCon with my old friend Dutch Mantel, one of the greatest storytellers in the history of the business. So let's tell some stories. First of all, <laughs> first, of, first of all, what are you up to? Well, I'm down here at WrestleCon, and I really, uh, I really enjoy my time at these events. And people ask me, do you come to see the wrestlers? And I do, but uh, I couldn't stand half of them sometimes <laughs> when I was working. But I actually come to see the fans. To me, the fans, they're the most important people because, and sometimes you get such great ideas from just listening to the fans' thoughts on certain things and that's that basically that's what I find these, these fan events are good for uh, and they're good for me because I enjoy doing them. I find you one of the more creative got minds in the business. Do you, you miss uh, not being involved in creative right now? Uh, no, not really. No, not really? No, let me tell you about creative. Creative is the most thankless fucking job in the world. And, and years gone by when, when companies go down and it's not drawing Oh, God, it's creative. They're, they're stupid. They don't know what they're doing. But when it's up and running strong, everything's clicking, guess what? Oh, this all the wrestlers. Uh, they get all the... They, the wrestler, when it's up, the wrestlers get all the credit. When it's down, uh, creative gets all the blame. Sure. Um, it took a long time, but I believe you got to have a WrestleMania moment, correct? Uh, and what, and what... Explain that. Didn't you manage... At WrestleMania? Oh, I did. Yeah. Yes, I tell did. us about that because you had a long no, career. I'm, not, I'm going to tell a story that a lot of people haven't heard. WrestleMania 29 right here at MetLife Stadium. I went to the ring with Jack Swagger. I did the only in-ring promo on the show, the live promo. And little did I know, of course, I talked about, you know, they're taking over. We the people. People speaking all kind of different language and concocting God knows what against us right in front of us. And we don't know what they're saying because so many languages are being spoken. But little did I know that Donald Trump was in the press box. Because that was the year he went in the, in the Hall of Fame, remember? Yeah. 
So I went back to the viewing area and sat down to watch the rest of the show. And I saw Donald, I saw Donald Trump come in. Wow. And he came in with his two sons and his daughter, Ivanka. But I noticed his other daughter, Tiffany, she wasn't nowhere to be seen, which led me, led me to believe that something's up with that girl, so that none of them carried her around. But I sat down and watching the show, and I saw Trump come in, and I saw him go off to, to my left. So I thought he was leaving or going somewhere. And I'm talking to Damien Sandow, and all of a sudden, I felt this on my shoulder. I looked up. No way. Calling me a liar. No, I believe it. No, I looked up, and I swear it was Donald Trump. And Donald Trump looked at me and said, loved it, loved the promo, T tremendous, beautiful, you know. And he says, great. So you think he gave him an idea? Well, I'm getting to that. And then he shook my hand and he walked off. But little did, did I realize that when he walked off, he walked off with my gimmick. <laughs> because all Make America Great Again is we the people on steroids. Now, some people have, have, have said, well, you probably got him elected. No, I didn't get him elected. I think the 63 million other people who voted for him had something to do with it. And I'm not a, I'm not a Trump basher because I can't even watch some TV stations now because it's Trump, 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 Trump. But I have figured out this. Oh, if you're looking at this, folks, this is my book. What's the name of it? I forgot. Tales from the Dirt Road. Where they could are, where they could they from a dirt road. where well, could they find it? Well, you can find it on Amazon. Oh wow! But if you really want it, if you can email me at dirtydutchmantel at gmail .com, I will personally send this to you, pick up the postage, and I'll sign it for thirty five bucks. Wow, that's not a bad deal. No, no. But anyway, no. Uh, say the website, uh, the email address again. Dirty Dutch Mantel with two L's at gmail .com. Great opportunity. Great story on Trump. It was a great story. So some people and probably think it's your fault. They probably do. But I'm saying, I, I can't even watch. You were in creative. Everything's your fault anyway. Uh, of course. <laughs> I'm used to it. But uh, the thing about Trump is, you know, it's a great time to be a journalist or a so-called journalist. Because, God damn, you don't got to really report anything. You just got to get up in the morning and read Trump's feed, his Twitter <laughs> feed, that he put up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my God, that's what I'm going to that's what I'm gonna write about today. And they go. It amazes me the guy doesn't sleep. He doesn't. And he, he has the media all over the place. And they don't even realize what they're doing. But he was, the, to me, he was the first so that, one who made me realize that this news is fake. They report what they want to, and CMNB, CSNBC and CNN are just opinion channels. Sure. So, hell, if I want an opinion, I can talk to you. <laughs> Not a good one. Uh, very cool story. We've heard a lot of WrestleMania moment stories on the Hannibal TV when we come here for these conventions, but that may be the best one yet. It's all your fault. Well, thank My you good very friend much. Dutch Mantel, be sure to check out his book on Amazon. Or and I got go another to one, too. It's called Tales. Uh, it's called... Uh, what's it? What's the first? Oh, The World According to Dust. I forgot the name of my own book. The Tales <laughs> According to Dust. The World According to Dust. That's the name of it. And they can get that too at the email address, correct? Uh, they can. Because I've been hit on the head a couple hundred thousand times. And sometimes my mind doesn't work too well. Well, glad to see you're doing well. And good to see you, my friend. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, back in Madison Square Garden at the Ring of Honor Fan Fest. Tomorrow is the big night here at Madison Square Garden. And I am joined by my old... You're the one who hired me in WCW. Do you remember that? I do not. And you don't, you uh, don't remember what you offered me? I, am, I imagine that it was something uh, very large. I'm probably a couple hundred grand a year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, you can, in, in this city, you can't even, I don't think, uh, get a cab for what I get started. But uh, but I appreciated the, uh, the offer. And uh, this is, for those who don't know, this is the director of operations of Ring of Honor, Gary Juster, who used to uh, work for WCW in a vice president's role. And let me get your feeling about this. We talked to Jay Lethal, and we heard from Joe Coff, and heard from Matt Taven. Um, you've booked... For Monday Night Show and the pay-per-view Star Starcade, some of the biggest buildings, some of the most famous buildings, and promoted some of the most famous buildings. You started in Baltimore, I know. H how does it feel after all this time? Uh, it's almost a second life in professional wrestling to finally be able to promote Madison Square Garden. Uh, it's almost surreal. 
Uh, as you know, because we've been through a lot of this together, um, at WCW we tried for years to get into the garden. And at that time, WWF, as it was then called, had an actual written exclusive right. with the garden. And they played almost every month, such that no other promotion uh, was welcome at the garden. That's changed. They only play about three times a year now, and they chose on WrestleMania weekend to take all of their ancillary shows to Brooklyn, to the Barclays Center, which left an opening here at Madison Square Garden. So it's a big thrill for me. I really never thought it would happen. As you say, I've kind of, kind of had a second life in wrestling, which I also didn't necessarily think would happen. So it's, it's a real thrill to be here, just on, on a personal basis, having been through the wrestling wars for... Jeez, all these, you know, I'm coming up on 50 years in the wrestling business. God bless you. So, um, you know, to be able to, to, to kind of, you know, cap it off, so to speak, with the garden is, um, it's a milestone. And I'm, I'm proud, I'm honored, and just thrilled to be able to do it. So you find out that you're going to be promoting and booking Madison Square Garden. Uh, wrestling's in an upsurge, as we know. Any worry about, you know, selling this place out? Because it turned out that it sold out almost immediately. But was there any worry in your mind? There was never a worry in my mind, uh, but what did surprise me was that we almost sold out on the pre-sale. Right. Um, capacity for us here at the Garden is 15,000. It's like the old nitros when we were hot, huh? It's like the old nitros when we were hot. Uh, I remember talking to the box office here about 10 minutes in, and we had already sold seven, 8,000 tickets, wow. and, the, and the lines were jammed. You know, they, they, everything was kind of you know, shut down for a few minutes. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just uh, the, the, the response has been phenomenal. Uh, it's been super, super exciting, and um, just really, really thrilled about the whole thing. Well, Gary, uh, congratulations on your continued success. Congratulations on booking Madison Square Garden. I still got a check ring announcement here off my bucket list. Not sure if that's ever going to happen, but I'm glad you got to check it off yours. Thanks, David. All right, boss. Good to see you. This is David Benzer back with the Hannibal TV. We've made our way to Madison Square Garden for the Ring of Honor Fan Fest, and I am here with the Ring of Honor World Champion, Jay Lethal. Jay, I've known you a long time. Um, I was riding on the Jersey Turnpike heading towards New York, and I, I saw a sign last night that said Elizabeth, New mm. Jersey. Mm. And I couldn't help but think what a kid from Elizabeth, New Jersey, who grew up a wrestling fan who, who's worked so hard, might be thinking to cross over the bridge of the Lincoln Tunnel and headline Madison Square Garden. Well, to be honest, as brutally honest as I can, Pender, I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I just thinking about it is making the back of my neck sweat. Um, and here's why I'm terrified. This is not just the biggest moment in Ring of Honor's history. This is a big moment for professional wrestling. What this event is representing, uh, things that we thought in this business that were impossible are becoming possible. Walls that we thought were impenetrable in this business are crumbling, crumbling down. Yes, sir. Because um, wrestling's on this boom period right now. It's this one-way trip up. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, as many fingers as I can cross, uh, hopefully this is not a one and done for Ring of Honor. If it is, I'm glad that I was a part of this event uh, running in the garden. But I think because of the wrestling boom period right now, um, this is just the tip of the iceberg for things in the wrestling business that we thought were impossible. Sure. You know? You know, there's not a lot, not just about you, not about me, but you say that there's not... A a lot left on my bucket list of things to do in the wrestling business. I've got to live my dream, but the one thing left to check off that uh, I won't be checking off tomorrow night, but you will, is to uh, be in Madison Square Garden. So congratulations. Thank you. Tell Thank me about the journey. Um, you've stayed here for the long haul and it's paid off for you. Uh, has there ever been a time that you've thought about moving on and uh, are you happy that you stayed? Hey, well, here's the thing about that. Well, when, we, when, when I think about my journey because of what's about to happen tomorrow, it starts way sooner than that. Uh, at a company called Jersey All Pro Wrestling in Bayonne, New Jersey, um, I won a contest. They, they were big on Tough Enough, MTV Tough Enough, um, and they liked it so much that they had their own little contest, and I was one of the winners of that contest. That is where it started for me. I won the Willy Wonka Golden Ticket, golden ticket. Um, and my very first match ever was in a liquor store well it's not a liquor store now it, it's this tiny little bodega place they had bingo in it a few times um, the locker room was just 
It wasn't a real locker room. It was just the guys got dressed in the corner and they just put tarp and drape over, uh, over that one corner and that's where you got dressed. Now, starting from that point on and fast forwarding to me wrestling in the most famous arena in the world, like I couldn't have written this story sure. any better. Um, but to answer your question, never did I think for a second, never did Ring of Honor, the company, give me any moment to think about going anywhere else. I've had the pleasure of wrestling in other locker rooms. I've had great times in other locker rooms. But the one thing that sets this moment apart, this locker room is, and it's gonna be hard for the fans to grasp, but uh, I have been given the opportunity to present my ideas and have them listened and not just heard but actually listened and my ideas they bounce my ideas off them and they shoot it back with a changing and back and forth I've been in plenty of companies where they hear they just hear your idea but they never let you run with it this company lets me run with it now here's the wildest part about wrestling when you let someone run with their idea as a professional wrestling company if you let a professional wrestler run with his idea he will put his heart he will put his soul into it because he is out to prove that not only is he a great wrestler he has great ideas he is one of the best in his business and that is when you find out who a true professional wrestler is and ring of honor takes the the amount the, the tremendous stock it's risky sure but they put that stock in a professional wrestler and they let them run with their idea and it's wild it's crazy of course ring of honor is not circulating around these heavy storylines um, but they give the wrestlers a chance and it really makes us excel it's the biggest difference it's something that i i, I now that i've had i would never dream of losing that part of of wrestling uh, in any other locker room. So if I had to go to another locker room knowing that I couldn't have that, it'd be a tough choice to make. It's called making an investment in the talent and right. letting them run with it. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Especially since Penzer, especially since this company was built on great matches, not great storylines. This company was built on matches like CM Punk versus Samoa Joe. This company was built on matches like Nigel McGuinness versus Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson as we know him. Uh, so when a wrestler has an idea here, it's not so much, oh, I, I got this doing the clown idea. It's not so much his storyline. It's, uh, hey, I can have a fantastic match with that guy if you make it happen. So it, it's a little easier to go with the idea. Risky, sure, because it could sure. bomb, but here it's, it's, it's all about what the company was founded upon, which is producing great matches um, that stand the test of time. As the world champion, it's a little nervous for me because I got to make sure that this company doesn't take a downward slope or a downward trend while I'm at the helm. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a little nerve-wracking for I'm sure you understand. It's nerve-wracking for me. I don't want to be at the wheel and that's when the company starts going down. They used to produce these great matches, you know? <laughs> oh, no. As the champion, I need them to keep thinking and keep feeling like these matches that the produced are just as good as the ones in 2003, 2004, 2005. Um, that's why I'm so nervous. God, you're making me nervous. <laughs> so, you know, not to take the spotlight off of Ring of Honor, but I do a podcast called City Ringside every week, and we talk a lot about, with the talent, and love to get you on, uh, and we talk a lot about uh, just my life, you know, as a wrestler, a wrestling fan and as a, a uh, in the business. And one of the stories that I actually, we were talking um, this past week uh, about it is uh, probably once a month, I go out, have a few vodkas <laughs> with the wife, okay. listen to some music, come back, pour me a couple more vodkas, <laughs> but it's three o'clock in the morning on a, uh, on, a, on a Saturday night. And, and I recommend this to everybody. We talk about this on, my, on the podcast a lot. I recommend this. And I guess what I pull up? Guess. What? The, the, the woo off. Is it the woo off? Ric Flair and Jay Lethal. Maybe, maybe the greatest segment in the history of professional wrestling. And I don't say that lightly. Here's the, here's the thing about that. I didn't realize I could do a Ric Flair impression until I had a few drinks. Because we, we were on a UK we were on a UK tour, and on one of the off days we all were at the bar. I had a little too much to drink. The next day, everyone's like giving me the Four Horsemen sign. Like that that's how I realized. So it's funny that you said what your little method that you do before you actually watch it, because it's actually how I figured out I could do the uh, Ric Flair impression, which is which is wild. 
I highly recommend about once a month, have a few <laughs> drinks. About two, it has to be after 2 a.m. Put, put on YouTube and check out that segment. Awesome. I do it about once a month and it's, it never stops being entertaining. <laughs> what, what were you That's thinking awesome. when you were doing it? I was terrified, like I am today. There uh, you go. At least I, you have some experience with I, that. I have plenty of experience being terrified. So t today, I'm terrified for what the event means tomorrow. Back then, I was terrified because that company, uh, Impact, had never given given me a live microphone to go in front of a live crowd to cut a live promo and the very first time they do that I'm in there with the greatest promo man in the history of this business so that's why I was terrified there tomorrow I'm terrified because Ring of Honor and New Japan have made this event right but now because of everything that this event represents it has now become bigger than both companies sure. because this this event is going to send ripples in the wrestling world not just a company not this just one company will feel it the wrestling world is going to feel and be affected by what happens tomorrow um, and that's got that's why I'm so nervous as well as the champion of Ring of Honor at a pivotal point in time uh, that's going to affect the wrestling business uh, it's terrifying well, we hope that it all works out. I'm sure it will. Good luck to you. Take Thank a you. deep breath. And uh, I'm really happy for your success. Uh, and uh, the kid from Elizabeth, New Jersey, who wrestled in a liquor store, probably not a great place to have wrestling <laughs> matches, <laughs> but uh, ends up headlining Madison Square Garden, the first company, non-WWE, WWF, to, to wrestle in Madison Square Garden. Ah, you know, what? That, that liquor store, I remember, it was called the Charity Hall. It was Jersey All Pro Wrestling's home. And you know... You know, I got the same story as a lot of other wrestlers when we when we break into the business. These little companies, they just got to run the, the shows wherever they can. Sure. And it just so happened to be this place in Bayonne, New Jersey, where Jersey All Pro Wrestling ran most of their events, and they took a chance on me. And here's the thing I didn't mention about that wrestling contest I won. They only picked three winners, and I wasn't one of the three. But afterwards, when we were all filing out, they said, because he was so young, which is why we didn't pick him, but now we changed our mind, we're going to add a fourth winner, that was me. So they took a chance on me, and look where I ended up. I mean, like I said, I couldn't have written this story any better than it already is. This is it's wild to me. It's so crazy. It's a great story. Soak it up tomorrow night. Enjoy it. I'm sure you'll tear the house down, and we thank you for your time. Thank you very much. We're back at the Ring of Honor Fan Fest here at Madison Square Garden with PJ Black. You know, PJ, the whole sort of theme of this show and this weekend for Ring of Honor is, is climbing the mountain and finally getting there, whether it's a talent that's always dreamed about wrestling Madison Square Garden or an owner of a company who used to be here as a little kid, as we heard Joe Koff talk about earlier. Uh, for you, it's a little bit different. You've, you've been here and wrestled in Madison Square Garden. So what does this mean? It obviously doesn't mean the same to you, but what does this mean in your life and your career where you're trying to come back from some injuries I mean obviously every everything that happens at the garden is special every time you come in here it's it's, it's very special so for me to be here right now uh, especially for the first time that that ring of honor is at the garden and I'm a part of that to me that's that's super special so obviously there's a lot of places to go right now a lot of a lot of people reaching out to offer what is it about ring of honor that made you want to come and and join the team they, they just gave me a really good offer like uh, creatively creative freedom like i i think that wrestling is an art form i consider myself an artist so to have creative freedom like con complete creative freedom is a huge deal for me and they, they they give me that which is fantastic but also a lot of different other different things you know like uh, Ring of Honor is growing right now like this is the first day of a Madison Square Garden show this is amazing like to be part of this is amazing they have a fantastic roster and I can just see myself having so many good matches with uh, with, with pretty much everyone on the roster you know, Jay Lethal, we talked to him earlier, and he was talking about the fact, similar to you, that a lot of wrestling companies, they hear the talent, but they don't listen to the talent. And he said he would, can't imagine going anywhere else because of the freedoms that he's given here. Is, have you experienced the same thing? And how refreshing is that for someone who's been the business second generation wrestler for such a long time? I have, I have. So, so I've been around for a long time. This is actually my 22nd year 
in wrestling. It blows my mind. <laughs> I know, right? Because I'm not that old. Well, maybe I am. But, uh, you know, it, to have that You have a full head of hair. <laughs> Enjoy it while it lasts. It's gray, but it, as long as it's there. Um, <laughs> no, it, it's definitely, definitely a big deal to have creative freedom. For a lot of guys, they don't care so much. You know, for a lot of guys, it's just a paycheck. And that's fine because they have families to feed. You know, like I don't have a family to feed. You know, like I feel like I'm five years away from my prime now. People laugh at me when I say that. But, like, seriously, like I feel like if ROH gives me the, the ball, I'm definitely going to run with it this year this year is going to be a, a big year for pj black well i wish you the best where can people follow you on social media uh, i'm pretty active on social media but you can go to my website pjblack.com the social links will be there the youtube page will be there some merch will be on there but uh yeah everything's on pjblack.com thank you sir good luck tomorrow night thank you so much back at wrestlecon here on the Hannibal TV with the lovely Gail Kim. Gail, how are you today? I'm great, thank you. So I know you had retired, and I say had. We'll get to that. We'll get to that in a minute. But and I hear all the same comments. Wrestlers don't really retire. And well, I could have told you that yes, before you retired. Yes. But you had retired, and you were working as a producer for Impact yes. Wrestling. Yes. Tell me about that. How is is, is that uh, different? And in, in, in what ways is that challenging as compared to being a competitor? I love it. Um, I think it was time for me to. I was already near the end of my career kind of transitioning to helping the younger talent but still learning on my own as well but I just felt like it just started becoming that everyone the newer generation was coming through and all the girls from my generation were kind of fading out and um, getting phased out and it was just me and Madison there at one point I said for the first time in my life I feel like I'm out an outsider in the locker room but just being able to be part of the business in some other form, which I love, has made me not miss the in-ring action. And so I know I have one more match at the end of this month and, you know, just that's what culminated to this point. And even though she has a bad attitude, I mean, Tessa Blanchard is one of the best right now. A phenomenal athlete, just a really bad attitude. So sometimes, like myself, back in the day, I recognize it because I had a bad attitude. She needs fixing. And it's the only way she's going to get fixed is in the ring. And that's going to be in your hometown of Toronto, yes, huh? Yes, yes. So How excited pretty, is that? That's pretty exciting. I mean, I I feel like, I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse, because they always say there's like that hometown curse. But I'm really excited because I think my family is going to be there. That's great. My friends. And uh, I've just been busting my butt to get physically ready for this match. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, you're great to talk to as always. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you. I saw that your husband, Robert's yes. show is coming back. Yes, April 20th. I saw that. I marked out. Yes, we're so excited. Uh, Are you going to be on any episodes? I mean, I'm there for some episodes, but I prefer not to be on camera, to be honest. Like, I might eat there and if I'm sitting with friends who have never experienced Restaurant Impossible, then you might see a little flash of me in the background, but I prefer not to be on camera. That's his thing. Yeah. And then wrestling's mine. I'm thing. very excited that that's yeah. coming back. Looking forward to seeing you come out of retirement. And uh, where can the fans follow you? Uh, Gail Kim, it's me on Twitter and Instagram, and that's it. No Facebook, no Snapchat, anything else, but check me out. Keep it simple. Thank yeah, you, Gail. Thank you. David Penzer back here at WrestleCon on the Hannibal TV. Have my old boss from the XWF, WWE Hall of Famer, former Intercontinental Champion. The list goes on and on. Greg the Hammer Valentine. Hammer, haven't seen you in a while. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. What are you up to these days, other than being a Hall of Famer? Oh, flying back and forth between Las Vegas and wherever. <laughs> I moved out there a year and a half ago. The only down downfall is a lot of long flights because most of the work is on the East Coast, you know. We were talking about that uh, last night, actually, about how much of a schlep that trip is when you're coming back East, so I feel for you. So uh, you still uh, in touch with uh, your brother-in-law, Brian Knobs? Yeah, actually... Uh, my wife talks to him a lot, his sister-in-law, and then I, you know, I talk to Brian. Brian, Brian's down and out right now. He's got an infected toe, but he'll be back up and running. Jerry's here. I saw him running around, so, yeah. So you really came in on the ground floor. You were at the first WrestleMania and so many WrestleManias after that, uh, an early member of the Hall of Fame. Tell me about how it was back when this whole thing started. You know, look at the, the weekend is huge. The whole city of New York and New Jersey is on fire. All kinds of independent shows, wrestling conventions. Did you ever think when you started back in 
you know, back in the 82 in WWE, WWF, that this would have become so big? Well, 1979 was the first WWF Madison Square Garden show I was on. And from 1979 to 85, you know, it was nice. But also 1985, WrestleMania won. My good friend George Scott was a booker then. I knew that we were on a verge of something really, really huge. And now, what's, what is it, WrestleMania 35? 35, you believe it? I, you know, and it's just getting bigger and bigger. You know, I long for the old days. I long for that, the matches that we had back then. But, you know, everything changes over time. And I'm just, I'm glad that wrestling is still very, very, it's more popular now than ever, so... Do you have uh, one favorite WrestleMania moment that you could pick out from all of the moments you had? That's really tough. That's really tough. I, I guess uh, WrestleMania 20 when, when they put me in the Hall of Fame, you know, so that that would be a good moment. Well, my old boss, believe it or not, I work for this guy. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, great, I agree, huh? great to see you, Greg. <laughs> nice. Hall of Famer and uh, legend in the sport, Greg the Hammer Valentine. Thank you for being on the Hannibal TV. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Back at WrestleCon with Jake the Snake Roberts, ladies and gentlemen. This story has been well documented, and I just wanted to know how you're doing. I'm doing great, bro. You're you? me, man. Having a great time. You know, it's been really special, man, because the last two or three years, more and more people are coming to me and telling me that, hey, they're getting clean, they're getting sober. And that's all I ever wanted, man. That's all I ever wanted is give somebody else a chance to get right. So thank you guys for working hard. I'll take an army of my guys against an army of your guys any day of the week. I recently saw the video of the one, uh, I think they raised $7,000 in one night for your surgery and how emotional you got. You never realized people cared. Has that outpouring continued, I'm sure? Absolutely, absolutely, man. The fans are always there, man. The fans never gave up when Jake the Steak Roberts. I gave up a long time before they did. So we're here for WrestleMania weekend. Do you have a favorite WrestleMania moment? Too many to talk about. <laughs> Some I can't talk about. <laughs> All right, where can we find you on social media? Everywhere. Look where to look. You can find a snake anywhere you look, man. All right, thank you. We're here with the world famous Joey Ryan, and I know that last night uh, we've been talking about it with some of the wrestlers, Shark Boy, and some of the other ones. You had a penis party last night, and I think a couple thousand people attended. Yeah, it was really, it was really cool because we had some stiff competition last night. Joey Janela Spring Break. Yeah, no pun intended. We had some stiff competition. Joey Janela Spring Break, NXT, obviously, uh, but we still got a couple thousand people show up uh, to watch us uh, have a party with a wrestling ring. And what is a penis party exactly? Uh, it's kind of just that. It's, you know, we're throwing a party uh, to celebrate everything pro wrestling, including penises. And, uh, uh, you know, we had a, a ring up and we did some matches. And, uh, yeah, and, I mean, it came out well. And we had a lot of different styles on the show, a lot of different wrestlers on the show. And everyone seemed to enjoy themselves. So your career has really got interesting places, probably places that you didn't thought, think it was going to get with, you know, the whole penis thing and uh, in, in all seriousness. And... Uh, uh, you know, I know you get a lot of some flack on you know social media, Jim guys like Jim Cornette, people like the hardcores yeah. that don't like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, do you just let that go in one ear and out the other? And uh, and and how do you feel about what what you've been able to build? Um, I mean, I, I definitely found something. Uh, been blessed with the amount of work I've been able to get. Uh, you know, it's, I, I feel like the negative is always more vocal, so people see that. But because I, you know, literally ten minutes ago. Uh, uh, Ricky Morton came by and he was just like, you know, he's like, I, I love what you do. You're, you're great for this business. I was on a show with Hacksaw Jim Duggan a couple weeks ago. He saw it for the first time. He he said he started laughing when I got back to the locker room. He said, oh, that's great. He's like, and he held up his two by four. He's like, I had to do something stupid to get over two. So to hear stuff like, like that from those guys, that means a lot to me. They're not going to be the ones that are going to tweet about it, though. The ones that are the people that are angry are going to be the one that the ones that post it online. So I, in, in that vein, I heard that you were uh, selling opportunities to pose touching your penis. How, how, how'd that go this weekend? It went really well. It went really well. Although the hotel thought I was just going to be standing there naked and like people. So we had to put a disclaimer out that, that I will be wearing my wrestling gear and there'll be no skin to skin contact because the hotel was worried that I was just going to be naked in these photo ops, which is absurd, but funny at the same time. So I know I've read on Twitter that you're a free agent now. You're kind of locked up with Lucha Underground. Now you're free. Uh, I know that you are on uh, All In. And uh, so wondering if I could get a scoop, uh, any chance of going to AEW, being a double or nothing? 
Um, I mean, I'll be, I'll be at StarCast for sure. So far, nothing on Double or Nothing. Um, again, no pun intended. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the free agent now, I'm just, I'm enjoying it. I was under contract for so long, and now I'm, I'm you know, I've got no obligations, no bosses. I'm going to enjoy it for a little while. I'm not going to be quick to jump into anything because I want to make sure I'm happy with the, the, the decisions I make. So I'm probably going to stay independent for a little while. But, I mean, I those guys, those guys are going to be successful with or without me. So, you know, when the timing's right, maybe I'll jump on with them. All right, where can people find you if they don't already follow you? Uh, I'm on Twitter, at Joey Ryan Online, or Instagram, at Joey Ryan. Uh, I'm on Facebook, too. You can just search me out. I'm pretty, I'm pretty accessible on social media. Next year, maybe you could use me as a ring announcer for the penis party because I have a circumcised one. Oh, yeah, me too. We are absolutely honored to have on the Hannibal TV right now wrestling legend Mick Foley. Mick, welcome to the Hannibal TV. Well, thank you, David. I appreciate that. So let's start with the obvious. Oh, why do I have mar magic marker on my face? Well, uh, last week I was in Kansas City and uh, someone uh, uh, gave me a prop bat, like a barbed wire bat, um, to use in a photo and I liked it. So I sent a total stranger out with a $50 bill and she came back with... Uh, she came back. She did come back with the bat and people had such a good time posing with it uh, that today I decided to go to the extra yard. And, uh, and create the illusion of blood flow with the use of a red paint marker. I think you may be the first one to do that. And you, you've done a, done a lot of firsts in this business. That just shows my level of yes, commitment. It yeah. does, it does. You don't see Hacksaw Duggan <laughs> with a red paint marker. You don't see Buff Bagwell with a red paint marker. Not even DDP has that kind of commitment. So Mick, we're here for WrestleMania weekend and you've had lots of WrestleMania moments. Tell me one or two that stand out to you. Ah, oh, well, um, I got to team up with The Rock. Oh, yeah, that would be a WrestleMania 2004 moment. 2004 against uh, Evolution, the Nature Boy Ric Flair, Randy Orton, Batista. And uh, and then I would say my favorite WrestleMania moment was against uh, Edge in 2006. We kind of tore the house down. Uh, we had a great match, memorable moment. And everyone's looking for those magic WrestleMania moments. And to tell you the truth, Dave, they're kind of hard to come by. And that one, if I remember correctly, was almost organic, correct? <laughs> oh, as far as the the build was just simply yeah. Edge calling me out on the fact that I'd never had that magic WrestleMania moment. When I retired, there was no stipulation, you know, that said, hey, you can't be a legend unless you've had this great WrestleMania match. So he just uh, made a point to point out that I had not had such a moment. Great stuff. So uh, what are you up to now and where can the fans find you? Oh, I'm up about 290. <laughs> I got to lose some of that weight that I, I, I regained some of the weight I dropped with DDP yoga. It turns out, Dave, this is a little science experiment. You got to keep doing it? If you stop exercising, <laughs> go back to the poor ways of eating, you will gain weight. Uh, so I am, I'm enjoying doing these type of shows. Uh, I'm going to be doing a little movie with David Arquette in oh, cool. a couple of weeks. Right after I hit Alaska, which will be the 50th state that I've worked in. That's the one that's been... Uh, missing for uh, several years so i'm just excited i'm really happy i mean i met you in 90 or 89 90 91 91 okay and uh man you know the idea then was to work as hard as you could try to have great matches i did never i never dreamed that people would be lining up you know 20 years after 19 years after i retired from full-time wrestling and uh and enabled me to make a nice living wearing a fanny pack and magic marker on my face and only you could pull it off. <laughs> Mick Foley, thank you oh, so much. There'll be about 10 of the boys with magic marker on their face. They're like, that's why Foley did so well. Yeah. You're an innovator. <laughs> You'll, 10 guys with magic marker on their face <laughs> by tomorrow. I believe thank you. God. Thank you for your time, right. Mick. Thanks, Dave. So it's family reunion day here at WrestleCon, and look who I ran into, the Nitro Girls, three of the Nitro Girls, Spice, Che, and Fire, and uh, uh, good to see you guys. Great to see you. So uh, tell, me, tell the fans what you guys are up to. Well, what we're up to today is getting to sign autographs, sure. of course. We're seeing lots and lots of our old WCW family, so that's been amazing. Uh, but just professionally in life today? Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Um, well, I'm up to lots of things. I, uh, oh my gosh, writing a book, own my own company, and I help people get on camera. Wow. Fun stuff like that. And what are you up to? I am uh, living in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, Ric Flair, my neighbor, of course, in the Charlotte area, too. Um, working in the university system and really enjoying uh, the nostalgia here today. Fans have been great. We're seeing so many of the wrestlers that we worked with back in Nitro Day. So it's been an awesome event here today. 
And Shay, what are you up to these days? Well, Sunny put it the best. We're nitro mom. Yeah. Sunny, oh no, yes. <laughs> I mean, for her. For I didn't want to say that. Yeah, no, but this is so good because it is what it is, right? So I have raising three kids and a husband. Well, four kids then. Yeah. Um, and I'm in <laughs> Dallas. No, it's 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 blessed life. We had blessed professional careers, and then now I have a blessed home life. And um, and coming here and getting to meet up and 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 catch up with some of our old friends has just been like icing on the cake. What was it like uh, back in the day to to work uh, every Monday and Tuesday and go from from sold out show to sold out show? I know I look back at it and I don't know how I did it, but it was a blast. What what do you look back and think about fondly? You know what? It was just really the time of my life. Yeah. It was once in a lifetime experience. Not many get, obviously. There's only been a handful of Nitro girls. So it's just the friendships that we created from there and the experience, life experience, personally and professionally. It's just, it's, it's a part of my life that I cherish. Yeah. Any memories stick out, Spice or Fire? So many memories. <laughs> uh, we're talking yeah. about writing a tell-all book um, yeah. because we've got some behind-the-scenes, hilarious stories, yeah. great fun memories. Um, but yeah, like Che said, the best part of all of it was the relationships that we formed that are still today. Um, so yeah, it was a very special time. We're lucky to have uh, been a part of it. Do you still remember the dance routines? A few of them. Yeah. Yeah. In fact. Uh, but with Tigress, who couldn't yeah. be here with us today, was texting us saying, uh, I want to see you girls do the chair routine. Yeah, pull out the chair dance. <laughs> Whenever we need to, we'll pull out some, yeah. some choreography. Well, all we need is Wildcat Willie, and we'll call it a day. Oh, Great yeah. to catch up with you, the Night Show girls, here at WrestleCon on the Hannibal TV. This is David Penzer overlooking Times Square in beautiful New York City. I'm with Devin the Hannibal Nicholson. And we are talking about the Hannibal TV Live. First ever, a brand new concept from the HannibalTV.com with Brian Nobbs, one of the nests. If you're going to do a live event and you're going to try something new, the guy to do it with is definitely Brian Nobbs. It's Saturday, May 11th at 2.30 at Absolute Comedy in Ottawa. That's Saturday, May 11th, 2.30, Absolute Comedy in Ottawa, Canada. And uh, this... Does Dom have a passport to get into Canada? He does, and apparently, unlike some other wrestlers, like I guess Haku, unfortunately can't get into Canada, he said he's never had a problem getting into Canada, so it could be very interesting. Actually, one fan who heard about this show commented, this is going to ruin your career, Hannibal. Don't do it. But I think I agree with you that if there's one guy to test out this live concept of the Hannibal TV in a talk show format in front of a live audience, it would be Knobs. But I have to admit something. I did that shoot interview with him in uh, Florida, where you're from Tampa, not too long ago. And he did say he wanted me to not put in some of the questions that I asked. So in front of a live crowd, you wow. can't go back on a question, right? So he had you edit out stuff? He did, yes. Well, that doesn't sound like the Brian Nobbs I know. He usually just lets it all flow. Oh, please don't cause no issues with that. Are you, is there any way you ain't know you can delete that son of a bitch right now? So tell me about the new concept. Well, it's going to be me and the guests in front of the live audience. It's going to be more comedic. It's going to be more funny stories. Of course, there will be some serious stuff but it's going to be entertaining. There's going to be opportunities for fans to meet the wrestlers before and after the show. I'll be signing autographs, taking pictures, as well as knobs and future guests. We're looking at Teddy Hart as another future oh, guest. Oh, jeez. How do you follow up Brian Knobs? <laughs> Teddy Hart, ladies and gentlemen. And the thing that's very special about this, too, is the last few minutes of the show, there's probably going to be about a 10 to 15 minute fan question and answer period where the fans will get to ask the wrestlers uh, that are appearing on the show questions so they can ask them anything and the other thing is the wrestlers can drink if they want so you were talking to me earlier was Dobbs drinking during a shoot interview everyone's asking that well I don't tell I don't talk about whether wrestlers are drinking or not in their interviews I don't care if they do or not but uh, I can tell you that Dobbs was not drunk and at this concept, it's going to be an absolute comedy in Ottawa. It is a bar. So if fans want to buy him drinks during oh, the there show... You go. Put um, the idea in his head. That's his gimmick. Exactly. So it's going to be interesting. I don't think the guy's bought a drink in 20 years from, out of his own money. 
I would believe that because he actually went out with me after the shoot interview and I was just telling you I went out to a bar with him and he actually blew his nose in a Kleenex and went to a couple, a man, male and a woman, sitting beside us, showed him the contents of that Kleenex and said, do you think I'm sick? So as you said, he is really nasty. And one thing that I was shocked at to learn that I didn't know until I became uh, friends with you is this guy actually runs Legends of Wrestling, yeah. which is a huge company, a uh, huge show coming up in Detroit that uh, you're involved with the business end of. This is a huge company. Ric Flair appears for it, David Arquette. Bret Hart, uh, can you tell us about how he met? Is there another side of him that I don't know? Where Not really. What you see is what you get. He came up with a concept, and he sold it uh, originally to the Tampa Bay Rays. He was like the mascot for a couple of years, and uh, he would cheer the Rays on, and, you know, he, he's Brian Hobbs, so, you know, he drinks and he gets drunk and does stupid stuff, and the crowd loves him no matter what he does. So he sold this concept to the Tampa Bay Rays, and it went over really well. So a couple years later, he picked up a partner who's an attorney who he had trained to be a wrestler and whose career ended up uh, ending early due to injury. And they formed the company, and they've done shows in Shea Stadium. They've done, they do shows for the Miami Marlins, for the Pittsburgh uh, 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 Pirates, uh, casinos, bat mitzvahs. You know, some of them are just one wrestler and an appearance at a bar mitzvah. And, you know, some like the one in... Um, in Detroit coming up is uh, wrestling and Q and A's and and talent and he, him and Frank run the whole thing and and but no he's it's not like you see, you see a different Brian Knobs like you know he he, he dashes into a, a a phone booth like Superman and puts on a, a coat and tie no it's what you see is what you get and it it, it works for him and and you know he's he's a fun loving enough guy that his quirks don't hurt him to where if I said and did some of the stuff. That as an exec <laughs> as an executive that he does uh, it wouldn't probably go over so well, but because he is nasty boy Brian Knobs, it's ex almost expected of him and encouraged. And when is that card in Detroit for any that fans? That is watching? Saturday, April twentieth. And I gotta ask you, Dave. You've known Knobs a long time, much longer than I've known him. You've known him since WCW in the mid to early 90s. I think he came in 93 or 94. Uh, what's your funniest Brian Knobs you know, story? You know, I was thinking about that, and I don't have one that really stands out. Every night is a funny Brian Knobs story. It's just, it, it, they all blend together. So, it's, you know, he, he, what, 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 how he acts is how he lives, and how his gimmick is is how he lives, and, and that's just Brian Knobs. So, uh... I guarantee you, for those who uh, come out to Absolute Comedy in Ottawa, uh, you're going to be in for the time of your life. And I guarantee you, be ready to buy him drinks. Anything can happen. It's going to be live. The Hannibal TV in Ottawa, Saturday, May 11th, 2.30 p.m. Be there. I had a great time with Hannibal. He's a crazy bastard. If you ever meet him, he has scars all over his head. He looks like Frankenstein, but hey, I love him. All right, we're at WrestleCon here on WrestleMania 35 weekend with Hall of Famers, the Rock and Roll Express. Last we talked, actually, a couple years ago was when you were going in the Hall of Fame. What's been going on the last couple years? And congratulations on being a Hall of Fame member. Like you said, April 2017 is the last time I've seen you. Yes. I, since then, I think me and Rick's been all over the world. We've been going around seeing the fans, doing appearances, meeting all the people and having a great time and still throwing them, you know, still throwing them drop kicks. Well, you want me to stop it here, you know, it's been a while since we've seen you. Yes, sir. And Rim Robert hadn't power bombed anybody through a table. Lately. Our, no, no, you no, think no, maybe? No, 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 no. Wow, not even. We no, know how to work, though. No, no, I know you do. How about the double drop kick? You know, double you drop, I'll take the double drop you know, <laughs> you know, being here in New York City and seeing all the different cultures, God, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, uh, and I just did some of my family tree heritage I found out that I was a, a, a little bit Irish a little bit English and a fifth of scotch but uh, <laughs> why man we're sitting here man it's nothing to compare nothing to compare like you said in 2017 when Robert and I were inducted to the WWE Hall of Fame actually it changed our lives uh, that's our, awesome and well deserved by the way yeah, well thank, thank you. you our booking fee went up <laughs> we uh, <laughs> we still wrestle all over the world, man. And it's one thing that it's something different that Robert and I still depend on wrestling for a living, even though we're, we're older. But, but, dude, if you get a chance to come and see us, matter of fact, we're going to be at uh, spring break tomorrow night. I promise you guys, you don't even understand. 
you're talking about getting your money's worth, we give you more than that. Hey, Ricky, we're here in New York City, and you're on my podcast. We talked a little bit about the rock and roll lifestyle. Uh, you were, you know, you guys were as big as Elvis or uh, or any of the any of the rock and roll stars back in the day, especially here in the Big Apple. Tell me a little bit about your memories of that, without giving away too much to get yourself in trouble. Well, I, that's one thing I can say. You, Robert and I, we, we did. We were rock stars. You understand me? But if if I told you one story. You wouldn't believe it, but that's only one day <laughs> in our life. We oh, got, I believe it. I we, saw a little bit of it. Yes, you know you did. You know what? I? It's crazy. But what's really crazy, and I'm still, our love for our business, it's not a part about uh, being somebody that we're not. And, and I'm not. And I, and I love the, the young talent and, and our future legends of, of our business. Yes, sir. This is what it's about. And as, as to watch them grow and watch them come along. That's what our business is about, and to help everybody learn how to work. So not, t- tell them about your school, since you're talking about learning how to well, work. Well, not only I have a school, Robert has well, one. We'll get to Robert. Yeah, Robert's got one down in uh, Douglasville, Georgia. APCW, Robert? Yeah, my, mine's APCW in Douglasville, Georgia, and uh, come on down there and check you it can, out. Uh, if you, you want to learn how to work, it's a place to go. Him on, uh, Instagram, the Robert Gibson. Facebook and uh, Facebook, Robert Gibson. Uh, I'm uh, Instagram, the Babyface Ricky Morton. Uh, <laughs> School of Morton. I'm uh, located in Chucky, Tennessee. Matter of fact, one of my students that just signed a contract with uh, New Japan Wrestling, Chase wow. Owens, the Bullet Club. Ting. You know, he's one of my students. I have a lot come through there, but uh, it's actually. Uh, a great honor and you know what what's a greater honor and i guess i have to become a stooge now like is, me you no know, is to have you have us on your show thank you so very much for awesome being thing. on the hannibal tv thank you, you guys are two of the classiest acts still in the business thank you and so uh, best of luck to both of you thank you for being here thank you thanks Dan. Here at WrestleCon, catching up with RVD, Rob Van Dam. And Rob, uh, thank you for the time. Uh, it's always great catching up with you. But now, this week, big news. You're uh, back with Impact on a semi-regular basis. What made you want to come back to professional wrestling? Money. Money? Dude, you I... You don't work... have enough? I... Who has enough money? Come on. I uh, am not looking to be um, extra busy, you know, and I enjoy chilling at home, but when the deal is right, the deal is right. Over the last three years, I've had like 10 to 12 matches a year. Sure. And um, I consider myself semi-retired. Now that I have a signed agreement, I'm not really sure it's going to be more matches. If it, if it is, it doesn't look like very many more. But um, we keep adding a few more on and a few more on. I'm not calling you a moron. I just no. want to make sure you understand You'd be that. right. Oh, okay. But You so, wouldn't be the know, first in this business. All right. So, um, you know, I'm back. But at the same time, um, I'm probably not going to be putting the boots on a whole lot more than I have been anyway. It's just going to be on television and so people are excited about that and for that reason of course it's going to count a hell of a lot more. Absolutely. Anything about Impact Wrestling or the management that that got that one made you want to come back or was it strictly a, a financial decision? Well it was um, Scott Demore who was talking to me and um, at first it was one match which happened last yeah, night. Yeah, we were there. We missed you. Cool. Well, um, to be honest, when I agreed to that match, I didn't even know there was impact. You know, I knew it was. I was talking to Scott Demore, but I didn't know like what all he does. And, and then when I signed the contract, I saw it was impact, and I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then uh, he started talking about um, you know doing future dates, and so basically, like people think that I am. Uh, uh, I come across like I'm super selective about the bookings that I take, but the the fact is that my standards are a lot higher than everybody else because they're trying to get out there and work their asses off. Me, I already did that. I worked hard to not work hard. Exactly. So, so when people are able to meet my fee, then I usually do end up coming out of the house. And usually that's out of uh, the United States. So the last several years I've been in uh, Italy and England, Australia, mostly wrestling overseas because they got more money. But as you understand now, Impact is taking care of RVD or I wouldn't be there. 
Well, great to get a word with you. Good luck with Impact Wrestling. Scott Demore is a good friend, and uh, we'll be watching you. Cool, dude. When it's worth it, it's worth it. If there's a reason, there's a reason. Otherwise, there's no reason, right? Something like that. Well, the fans, I know they all love me, and I know they want to hear me say that I just missed being in the ring, and that I'm looking at these guys, and I just know I'm going to have great matches, and that's why I'm back. But come on. That's all just like a given. When you got RVD, you got the whole effing show. Yes, sir. Well, we wish you the best of luck, and uh, we'll stay in touch. Cool. I am here, ladies and gentlemen, with Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. For those who follow my podcast, City Ringside, you'll know that Scott has promised. You have promised, right? I said maybe. He has promised to do my podcast. We did hook him in on the Hannibal TV, so uh, we're going to keep uh, trying to, to get him to call in and do the podcast, City Ringside. But, uh, Scott, great to see you. Uh, what are you up to? I know that you're a small business owner. Yep, still at my restaurant. Uh, trying to make money when the Nasty Boys don't come in. I heard recently yeah. the Nasty Boy, because it's a full bar at the Shoney's, right, in Ackworth? Yeah, and it came with a $5 bill. Yeah. I, I heard they came in and, and sat there for about eight hours. Yeah. You you hosted them for a while, and then uh, I well, believe the, the, you had to call in backups and your brother, Ricky. I needed to take a break, and so I left, and then my brother came in. No, it's good to see those guys, man. I had always had fun time with those guys, so I was glad they showed up. So I have a legitimate question that I was going to ask you if and when you're on my podcast, and I'm not holding my breath, so I'm going to ask you now since you're right here in front of me. Uh, Back towards the end of WCW, your character was 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 a bit off. Uh, felt like you could go off at any time, um, and it. I actually, you know, as a shoot, I actually, you know, would would kind of run away or walk away, you know, if if, if I thought you didn't look the right way. Um, how much of that was being in character, and how much of that was just being fed up and and and, and losing it? Well, a lot of was being fed up of the bullshit, you know. This is why I went and ran away because I had a feeling it wasn't all the work. Yeah, I mean, you got tired of the, the shit that was being put out on TV, you know, and, it, and it, you know, it was just tiring, you know. It was like I think you know I was about ready to snap because it was just I mean it was just horrible shit, you know. It's like I'm supposed to, what I'm it was just. Yeah, I was ready to snap. <laughs> See, I've, I've been, yeah, I've been you wanting to know that. Those memories are going to snap <laughs> You're going to snap me. Yeah. Hey, let's uh, let's talk about better memories. We're here for WrestleMania 35, WrestleMania weekend. What's your favorite WrestleMania memory? None. None? No. You, no, the one I was in it was in Las Vegas. It was a horrible place. It was outside. Is that the one where they wore togas, the announcers? Yeah, that's where Bobby Heenan came in with uh, riding backwards on yeah. the camel. God bless Bobby well, Just Yeah, Bobby Heenan was great. Uh, I, it was you know great to work with him, but I mean, it was outside, so all the all the noise went up. You know, it was just terrible atmosphere. Uh, so none. Do you have a favorite WCW moment? WCW what moment? Um, I mean, anytime when, when it closed. <laughs> no, was, that was the worst time, worst day of wrestling. Yeah, you know, the, then the monopoly began. Yeah, I mean, every time you won a world title. Or you know, world tag team titles, or going to uh, Japan wrestling in front of seventy thousand people was great, you know. But uh, nothing really tops when you wrestle in front of one hundred ninety-three thousand people, you know, three days in a row in North Korea. So I was going to bring that up. Uh, you, you went. There's a lot of talk in the news now about North Korea, and you guys did a three-day event there back in the '90s. Tell me about your memories of that country. Oh God, horrible food, you know. <laughs> We went over there with my. I thought Japanese food was great. Korean food, Korean bar, no Korean barbecue in Korea. No, it was it was worse than you know. Japan's was okay, but luckily I brought a bunch of my own food with me, a tuna fish tuna. stuff. Yeah, we went over there, Muhammad Ali. Uh, it was a big celebration for Ricky Ch uh, Tenzan. Uh, I mean Ricky Dozan. Ricky Dozan. Yeah. Antonio I mean, Inoki was part of that. Yeah, that was well. No, that was his show. Right. It wasn't a WCW show, it was a New Japan show, and because uh, we were wrestling for New Japan at that time. But yeah, it was, I mean, uh, you know, uh, 193,000 is kind of hard to imagine, you know? Yeah. Because it was outside outdoor um, uh, Olympic Park, you know? I mean, you look way up and the people are looking about that big, you know? So uh, other than the food, and you know, once we landed, they grabbed our passports, so we knew we were fucked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think we, we could say that. Can we yeah. say that? So, yeah, you, you, you really could. I mean, the, the, just 
the propaganda. They only had three channels. Is it all? Is it all propaganda news? Oh yeah, it's like black and white TV, three channels. One was military. The other was like, yeah, it was. It was. They were definitely back in the like 40s, 50s. That's crazy, but with them in the news, it's interesting to hear your your take on on being in that country. Hey, Scotty, thank you so much. I know you don't do a lot of these. I'm still going to bug you to do my my podcast at some point, but if I don't get a chance, I appreciate the time. And uh, don't forget, if you're ever in North Atlanta, if you want to stop in to Shoney's at, at in Ackworth, uh, you might see uh, Big Papa Pump here doing dishes, huh? Uh, I'm there all the time, man. But 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 unless you're the nasty boys, no free bar tap. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Get ready, to, get ready to hit that edit button. That's Rolling. all I'm saying. Getting crazy here at WrestleCon, oh, back on the Hannibal TV oh, with SoCal oh. Uncensored. And uh, tell us, you know, uh, we know what you're doing now, and uh, tell us how that's going uh, with uh, AEW. Right now we're sobering up. Oh, you mean, oh, you mean with, oh, with AEW. With AEW. Yeah, we're really not doing that. AEW. We're really not doing that. No, it's, it's great, you know, uh, AEW, we've gotten a lot of uh, really uh, positive uh, response from the fans here. Everyone's very excited. Uh, like uh, real groundswell of, of wrestling Support. fans who just want something different and are very excited for what we're doing and we're here just kind of as brand ambassadors doing our part and uh, spreading the good word. Christopher, you've been a part of this business for a long, long time and a, a part of time. different companies. Uh, how exciting is it for you to be able to be on something like this, starting from the ground that has a lot of support, though? Uh, it's absolutely outstanding. I mean, I if you had asked me a year ago if this was going to be a possibility, I couldn't have even thought that this might be a step that I would take. But now here we are. Uh, one month, a month and a half away from Double or Nothing, Double or nothing. the very first step for AEW, and um, it's just awesome to know that, like like Frankie said, the fans are 100% in support of this endeavor, and uh, all the guys that are behind the scenes that are putting this together, we know that it's going to be a success, we know it's going to be a home run, and we just can't wait to get it in front of the fans to like thank them for their support. That's great. Scorpio, it took a while for you to uh, find your break. How, how's it feeling to be part of uh, the what's cool now? You know, it, like you said, it took a long time, but I feel like everything happens in the right time, you know? And yes, so uh, everything started clicking for me at the perfect time. Now there's AEW. Uh, what better time to break out? And uh, I hate to beat the same drum, but what makes me the most excited, what makes me the most confident that it is going to work is the passion and the fire that the fans are showing us every time we come come out we're not even doing shows we've done rallies they've come out they've waited for hours just to see us talk just to meet us and it's it's amazing i can't wait for double or nothing man i think we're going to turn a lot of heads i can't wait to see you there hey i know you got a cigar company out there i want to give you a chance to promote it oh you mean american rebel cigars yes, sir brought to you by myself and cody yeah it's it's great we're uh, we're having another event next week in nashville more cigars coming out and AmericanRebelCigars.com. You can find us there, man. It's a great cigar. Three of the most talented, nicest guys in the biz. So Cal Uncensored. Good luck at Double or Nothing. SGU. 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 You, we are back here at WrestleCon on the Hannibal TV with my old WCW friend, Sonny Ono, the uh, uh, person who invented the selfie. And, of course, the man with all the belts. You know, where did you still have the belts? No, yeah, no more. No, 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 no belts. <laughs> the Ultimo Dragon, uh, back in the day, nine belts, I think. Nine? Yes, ten. No, ten. Ten, 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 belts. ten belts. Only man to have WWE and WCW belt at the same time. Really? Yeah. That was real kayfabe, but that's true. So, Sonny, we, me and you talk every once in a while. Tell me about uh, your memories of uh, your time in WCW, and what, when you look back, what do you, uh, what do you cherish, and what, what, what stays in your memory? You know what I really miss? What do you miss? I really miss hanging out with you. No, you're full of crap. <laughs> you hear that? Because you used to bite all the drinks. That's why I used to oh, like to hang I'm out. Jewish, so now I know you're full of crap. <laughs> no, I miss all the fun days. And it's great to be a place like WrestleCon, where we get to see all the WCW buddies. And um, look like you got another job for uh, Hannibal TV. I'm just doing all kinds of stuff. You know, I got the podcast, City Ringside. You were one of my first guests and did a great job, and I appreciate it. Talk about how you came up or uh, with the selfie that's, you know, taking on a life of its own. Well, you know, I was doing selfie before they were called I know, selfie. I know. So we were... You know, that, you know, somebody would say that's a gimmick. That's a shoot. <laughs> yeah, true. Because, you know, when we made an entrance, you know how all the Japanese are like, we like to memorize the moment, you know? 
and and so that since nobody was taking our pictures since we were so low on a towing pole so i just said hey we'll just take a picture of ourselves and with the with a little you know uh uh fuji camera little wind-up gimmick and we were doing that and you know and then before you know it phone camera came out and everybody was doing selfies do i get a like a i was going to say that? if you look back you should have like uh uh, you know, gotten a patent or something. God, you know, not another one of the, my mis misfortune that I, you know, that I, that I missed out on. Sonny, lots of uh, people are going to be seeing this. If uh, there's any promoters out there that want to book you and the Ultimo Dragon, where can they go? Well, they can, you know, they can find me on a Facebook on the Sonny Ono, and you can contact me and uh, get us out there. Ultimo is amazing. He's still wrestling and wow. killing it like it is. You know, he has been. So I heard that there's a rumor that there's a private party tonight with you and the Nitro Girls. Any way I could crash that party? Well, I'll give you the phone number later. But if Nitro Girl is coming, so if you contact me through Facebook, I can maybe hook you up a little rendezvous. <laughs> We're looking forward to having a reunion with the old ring announcer and the old Nitro Girls. And of course, my old friend Sonny Ono and 10-time champion, the Ultimo Dragon. Thank you for stopping by on the Hannibal TV. All right, thanks. <laughs> thanks. We are here at WrestleCon in New York City on WrestleMania weekend. And 35 years ago, my guest at this time was the opening match, the first match on the first ever WrestleMania in Madison Square Garden, right in this very town, Tito Santana, WWE Hall of Famer. Uh, welcome. Tell us about that, uh, that WrestleMania moment and any other moments that you uh, treasure. Well, WrestleMania won, first match. I never thought about how big professional wrestling was going to become. It turns out to be probably the best match in my, my entire career, and, and I had a few uh, titles. Uh, it was a very, very... It was an unbelievable moment, you know, uh, that, I, that I will never live down. Uh, and to see the way it's grown, uh, it just keeps getting better and better. Could you, in your wildest dreams, have believed 35 years ago that it would become an entire weekend and, and sell out a stadium and ha have wrestle conventions and independent shows based around it? We had no idea that it was going to get this big. I, I don't even think Vince McMahon knew that it was or thought that it was going to get this big. Uh, I would have never thought that I'd still be, you know, doing shows from my uh, career as a professional wrestler with the WWE it's been the best thing that happened to the legends speaking about doing shows you are going to be at the Legends of Wrestling show in Detroit on April 20th uh, I'm going to be there as well as Ric Flair and Booker T and so many others Hacksaw who we talked to earlier uh, talk to the fans in Detroit what are you looking forward to uh, to seeing just looking forward to meeting the fans in Detroit again? Well, of course. I mean, uh, I had some great matches, especially against Greg the Hammer Valentine. Uh, we right. sold out some arenas there. Uh, and, and to come back and to see some of the wrestling fans that just like to come see the legends, you know, it, it's uh, it, it never gets old. Well, I'll see you there, and uh, thank you for your time. And a great trivia question. Who is in the first WrestleMania match? It's Tito Santana and the Executioner. Arriba! Back at WrestleCon with my old boss, my old friend Tony Schiavone. Tony, uh, welcome to the Hannibal TV. Uh, you keep you look great. You keep losing weight? Uh, on uh, DDP Yoga, down 53 pounds. Thank you very much. Wow. But Dave, as you know, uh, you and I have been together for many years. I can certainly lose the weight, but I'll probably put it back on two years. It's funny, who were we talking to yesterday? Uh, Mick Foley we talked to yesterday. Really? He said he said the funny thing about DDP yoga is when you stop doing it and you start eating again, you actually gain back the weight. Oh, well, I'm sure you do. Yeah, I mean, if you start eating again, you get off your diet, you certainly are going to do that. But uh, I feel great. I feel good. Uh, I've seen things in my body I hadn't seen since 87. <laughs> uh, and so uh, we're having a... They're having a good time. Lois is on it, too. She's lost 40 pounds. Really? Yes, she's lost 40 pounds. So uh, it's a combination of diet and being on DDP yoga. So we're uh, we're enjoying life right now. So you're doing uh, your podcast, What Happened When? And uh, what else are you doing? Well, uh, I'm doing What Happened When. Uh, I'm doing live shows. Eric Bischoff and I are doing a combo live show oh, Monday. Right? Yeah, we're going to be... Uh, at Littlefield in Brooklyn right before Raw. Oh, wow. And we're going to have an afternoon show right before we go to Raw, so it's not too far away. And uh, so I'm still doing baseball with the Braves AAA team, still working with the Georgia Bulldogs, work for a radio station in Atlanta. So I've got a bunch of stuff I've got going on. Yeah, you're always working. Right, yeah, I know. Always working, right? Always working. 
Where could the fans find uh, what happened when for the few that don't listen? Okay, uh, what happened when is obviously everywhere on Spotify, it's on iTunes, and it's on MLWradio.com. Uh, and you can go to whathappenedwhen.com. And also we have a Patreon site as well, Patreon forward slash WHW Monday. And uh, gosh, we just did episode 116. How about that? 116 episodes in the in the books already. And yeah, I've done I've done almost over 100 of mine. Yeah. You're gonna keep doing it though now, because it was a short term project for a while. Correct? It was uh, only to get my daughter's uh, wedding paid for, and I thought, you know what? I'm having a good time. I'm having a lot of fun, so I'll keep doing it. Well, great to see you as always, Tony Schiavone. <laughs> what happened when? It drops every week, where podcasts are found. I'm I'm 26. I'm 26 plus 30. We're back at WrestleCon with a friend of the show, a friend of Hannibal TV. Yeah. I'm here with Tracy Smothers. Tracy, great seeing you. What you up to? Good seeing you. Hey, I was 6'3 at one time. I think I'm 6'2 and a half now, Dave. Good to see you. How you been? I've been good. How about you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Doing good. Glad to be here at WrestleCon. It's the first time I've ever been here. A lot of times when I've been contacted by vendors, I was already booked by you know somebody else to arrive around home and stuff and do, but good time. Is I, I did the penis party show last night, wrestled Sue so Young. It was a blast. Yeah, you know, the boss behind the camera was at the penis party. He was right, rather uh, impressed. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, thank you. But it was a lot of fun. What What is a penis party? In, in, uh, it's an adult show and language and everything else, and of course a lot of a lot of a lot of penises around and stuff. But it was a lot of fun. You're getting kind of uncomfortable. Of yeah, it's pretty crazy. It so tell, let's go back to the days of WCW, Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Give us a memory or two of of uh, of those days. A lot of fun. Boy, the business will never be like that again. You know, I mean, the camaraderie, the house shows, you're Thursday through Sunday doing shows. You do TV, what, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Monday, Tuesday, two days of the week. Uh, you went home a lot, but it was a, uh, traveled the whole country and did. And uh, some of the best of the best, the great. You just mentioned one, Arn Anderson. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. You know, things like that. But uh, uh, I remember you used to bring a crew up before, Bob Cook. Yeah. All those guys, right? But I can name them all, tons of them, you know. But uh, some of them guys you still see around. What's great about places like things like this? See old friends. Yes, sir. And, and you know what's what, uh, what's sad about it is that you never know because it could be the last time you ever see them. Unfortunately, not fortunate. Knock on wood. Uh, yeah. Rest in peace to all. But uh, uh, I'm just glad to be here. I'm just I'm thankful to be alive. I like I like doing it now. I haven't wrestled full time in like 12 years. I do it around my job. I got a job now with benefits. Oh, good. And so you know, and, and it's flexible with this. So, Do you have a here. social media presence where people can follow yeah, you? Yeah, uh, uh, I'm just on Facebook, Tracy Smothers 70 at yahoo.com. That's, that's where you can find me. All right, one of the nicest guys in the pro wrestling business, ladies and gentlemen, Tracy Smothers. We'll be back with more on the Hannibal TV from WrestleCon. We are back at WrestleCon on the Hannibal TV with Vampiro, international superstar. How you doing, man? I'm good. It's been a long time since I heard you say that. Yeah. Vampiro. Strange. Good yeah, to see you, bro. You got you were in for, in for the skyrocket in the XWF, and said, except the company went nowhere, so so did the skyrocket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are you doing? Let's talk about better things. What are you doing now? You're working with AAA? I'm working with AAA. I got some stuff going on in Las Vegas. I just moved there recently. Oh, really? Um, with my martial arts schools and, and uh, some TV projects, some producing stuff for Europe. Having fun. Really happy. And I, I heard that uh, AAA is going to be coming to uh, Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Uh, tell us more about that. If wh whatever you know, give us some details. All I know is it's September 15th, which you know, well, not a lot of people would know, but that September 15th is, a, is the Independence Day for for Mexico. So it's a big, big thing. Uh, we've been trying to get back in there since 1992, so it's a huge moment. Don't know the matches. Uh, we got it done, and it should be exciting. I got an interesting question. What do you do when you run out of places to get tattoos? Uh, Start cutting your hair real short and tattooing your head, putting them on your face. You want to show off for the camera? <laughs> Great to catch up with you. Where can the fans find you? Uh, my Twitter account is the easiest, or or Instagram. They're both. Instagram is Vampiro Voodoo V U D U, and on uh, Twitter it's Vampiro underscore the little one you know and Vampiro. 
that's about it. All right, thanks, man. Dude, Great it's been you. good to see you, Great man. See you. Back at WrestleCon for the Hannibal TV, and if you watch the Hannibal TV, you must know my guest at this time, frequent uh, Hannibal TV guest, and uh, hey, you're coming back to wrestle, I heard, up north. Yes, I can't wait to come back up north. The Great North Wrestling, oh my God, it's one of my favorite places. Canada is literally, I consider that my second home. And plus, I get to see the crazy, the demon, Mr. Hannibal. I think I'm the only person that kinda can get along with Hannibal. <laughs> uh, he puts up with me too. Hey, so you were on my podcast and you told a, a great story. I was wondering if you could tell it real quickly about when you were training at FCW and your dad came to work with you. Okay, well, the first time like I got to the experience of getting to wrestle my dad, he wouldn't come in until at least I was about a year and a half through training. And it was after school, everyone's left, and it was just my dad, Dusty Rhodes, Steve Kern, Norman Smiling, and they're all sitting around the ring. And finally, finally, I get the opportunity to get to wrestle my dad. And I'm kind of joking, kind of laughing, playing around, and I see my dad get this weird, fiery look in his eyes. And right before I get to lock up with my dad, BAM! He punches me right in the nose, breaks my nose, I'm bleeding everywhere, and I look at him, he goes, don't you ever laugh or make fun of this business. I love that story to this day, and uh, your dad is over there, uh, the, the legendary Jerry Briscoe, and uh, uh, I know you guys are going to be at the Hall of Fame tonight. Yep. Whose speeches are you looking forward to hearing? Man, I'm so excited for Luna. I mean, everybody, it's, I'm actually really looking forward to this one. The lineup for this Hall of Fame is probably one of the best lineups that I've seen all year. Well, Wes, we look forward to having you back at Great North Wrestling later this year and uh, be on the lookout for that when that's announced for the date and uh, location. Max, and I'm coming for you, buddy. You're not holding on to that title forever, buddy. I'm coming for you. That title belongs to me. Yeah. It's ironic that our final interview at WrestleCon here in New York City on WrestleMania 35 weekend is with the brand ambassador of WrestleCon. I'm talking about friend of the show, actually, Road Warrior Animal. Road Warrior Animal, how are you, sir? Bro, what a way to wrap up a terrific weekend, right? With the ambassador of WrestleCon. You know, I started off with Ric Flair in the ring. And too bad he's not here right now because I'd hit him over the head with a belt. <laughs> so uh, when you talk, think about WrestleMania, I know you guys, you and uh, your partner were in many. Uh, what's your favorite WrestleMania memory? You know, I think sometimes, you know, we did uh, the thing with Ahmed Johnson in Chicago, you know, and, and then we came back in Indianapolis for WrestleMania. And, you know, I, I, WrestleMania is such a culmination of great events. It, it, listen, it's it's the Super Bowl of our business, right? So when you have WrestleCon now compared, you know, combined with WrestleMania and then all the other companies that are growing now, which is great for the business and great sure. for the fans, it's, uh, it, it's a great time in pro wrestling right now. And uh, what can we expect from you in the future? You got to pop up anywhere? You talk about all these new companies. Man, you never know, bro. I may pop up with you know, all elite. You never know. I may pop up a ring of honor. You know, I got a couple guys of War Kings. I walk down to the ring every once in a while. You know, Jackson Crimson, they're doing really well. You know, I've been talking to All Japan and New Japan about doing some stuff. You never know, man. You know, because Hawk and I spent a lot of time over in the Orient, you know. So, sure. it, 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 you never know. Animal... Hey, listen, the LOD's living forever, man. What are you going to do? I'd be remiss if I didn't end by asking you, how, how's your son doing? He's doing good, man. You know, he's on the Big Ten Network. Does the Big Ten wrap up at the end of the week? And uh, he uh, just went in the, uh, the Buckeye Hall of Fame for Ohio State. And uh, he's happy. He's, he's on the ESPN radio show there in Columbus. And uh, he's, he's just relaxing, man, enjoying life. Fantastic. I remember when he was still in college and now his career is over. It goes by like Bro, that. Well, eight years in the NFL, you know. I got my older boy, Joe, who uh, served over in Iraq for a couple oh, wars. Thank my you daughter, for Jessica. Service. Yeah, man, no problem, you know. And so, yeah, man, he, he's, he's happy. He's retired. Tired, so he's everybody keeps asking are you going to get into wrestling business he goes hell no dad I watched what you did I don't want to go near it you know so hey where could uh, the fans find you on social media man you can get to my Facebook at Joseph Laurinaitis my normal name and then you go I got Water Rush Podcast you know you go at RW Animal the Twitter handle so or you go waterrushpod.com so reach me there man I got a great one coming out with Jay Lethal first non ww whatever champion to be in the garden that right. sold out right that's awesome man and you know he was a great great interview so yeah man a lot of good things are happening all right great to see you the brand ambassador for WrestleCon, the legendary road warrior animal finishing things up here from new york mm -hmm.